No time to question my moves. I stick to the path that I choose. Me and my friends are gonna do it right. You'll never see us run away from a fight. To be a master is my dream. All I got to do is believe and I believe I got a chance to win. I want the whole world to see that I believe gonna be a champion and all I got to do is believe in me Pokemon bonus points if you know which series that is from I'll give you all a hint it is one of the Johto region series but uh we're taking it a little bit more lax though within yeah, that world indeed yeah. but I, no, I'm not going to miss an opportunity to sing one of the best Pokemon theme songs. Don't at me. The original one is iconic, but it is not the best one. All right. I'm going to start off with that hot take. Any questions? Any debates? Nah. Uh, I, I do want to nah. start off real quick. What, do you, what in your guys' opinion, is the best Pokemon opening for English? I house. Yeah, the, honestly, all of the Johto ones. Fucking the original Johto yeah. theme is an absolute fucking banger. I mean, come on. Everybody wants to be a master. Everybody wants to show their skills. Everybody wants to get there faster. Make their way to the top of the hill. That's fucking, that's a classic. Master Quest, which if you guessed Master Quest, you were correct. Um, yeah, I thought it was class. Yep. And then, of course, there, there was one, there was a, there was a second one before master quest that i can't remember off the top of my head but all the johto ones are bangers anyways we're here oh, to... oh yeah and uh, mm -hmm. i was just gonna say a little bit of a dark horse because you just said the pokemon universe mm -hmm. the one for the show that we're talking about today oh yeah no this oh, yeah. one this one is a this one is such a it's a good vibe and the show we're it talking is... about today people and uh, fellow Pokemon trainers, is Pokemon Concierge, the new Netflix claymation special. I'm very excited mm -hmm. to talk about this. I very rarely get an opportunity to gush about Pokemon. And uh, since I've decided that Pokemon is going to be a fun with the homies game instead of a stream content game, I am really excited to talk about this. Before we get started about talking about the show proper, uh, let's go ahead and uh, like we do with a lot of this uh, these franchise stuff when we it's the first time we dive into a franchise. Let's give some background of ourselves on uh, our time in the wonderful world of Pokemon. We'll start with you, Brian. All right. So uh, mine is probably going to be the least out of the three here. I did grow up on the original, watched a lot of it, but then when I grew older, kind of fell away from it. And then, when I was with these guys, they kind of reignited it a bit, and uh, I have played Violet, Scarlet, one of those, I can't remember which one, and uh, so yeah, Sword you played Sword and Shield. Shield, yeah, I remember you played Sword and Shield, because you, you got it around the same time as we did. Uh, also, and then Brian has, and also, Brian has participated in two different pokemon campaigns that i've run one that lasted for a year mm -hmm. and one that uh like kind of like petered out very early on because i was just out of ideas oh yeah i played the newer games but i've also played the uh the older games like um how i think i'm gonna say how far I how had, far do you go up to before you uh before you fell off i believe i played red silver ruby sapphire played... Uh, Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald? Might have been Sapphire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, out of the two. Diamond and Pearl? Were any, um, were any of them translucent? Uh, I mean, the, 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 the Pearl one's like, cartridge was kind of translucent. The Diamond one then was blue. I may have played that, and I think I did at one point play... Uh, so to help you Wait, out, I didn't. To help you out, uh, Diamond and Pearl is the one with Piplup, Chinchar, and Turtwig. Then I will put that as a clear maybe. Okay. I do also remember I didn't buy it, but I did play Yellow when that came out. Oh, I loved Yellow. And also, I have uh, played Snap. I pl and... I played the fuck out of Snap as a kid. 
I want to. Well, I want to I, I get the new one. The one that I played the fuck out of, and kind of like played a little too much of, back in the day, was another Pokemon game. Stadium. Stadium. Stadium and Stadium Two were both of the both. Well, the first Stadium game was the game where I rented it so often from Blockbuster. My mom was like, "You know <laughs> what? It's cheaper if I just buy you this damn thing." Uh, <laughs> I kind of had that too, but not with Stadium. It was with, I think it was Sly Cooper 2. Oh man, Sly Cooper 2. Good one. All right, so we'll go to Tony next, and then we'll go to me. Tony, you, like myself, are a, a seasoned veteran, so let's talk about your journey through the wonderful world of Pokemon. Started with Blue. Uh, it was a gift from my dad. And I played it through a lot of uh, his deployments. Mm -hmm. uh, then played through Crystal, actually. Oh. And then I also played through a lot of Ruby. My old cartridge of Ruby disappeared. And then I got another cartridge of Ruby a few years after that. Because that cartridge was left at my cousin's. And I fell off for a few years. But in that interim, played Stadium 2, played Stadium 1, played Snap. Just all those games in a cluster, then a just a dry period of not playing Pokemon. Not until X and Y that I got back into Pokemon. Oh, that was when that was when we met. Because I remember mm -hmm. I remember uh, battling you for the first time and beating your ass in X and Y. That's right, yeah. X was my game of choice for Gen 6. And then I went backwards, Gen 5, Gen 4, just to give you folks a summary of the games that I've played. Here are all the versions that I've chosen throughout my years playing Pokemon. Blue, Crystal, Ruby. I believe I... have No, it was Platinum. Uh, Black and Black 2, because very, very exclusive. Well, no, White and then Black 2. It, it was funky like that. Mm. Because they changed up Braviary's exclusivity. I, I was upset about that because I got both blacks. It's weird and rather absurd. X, Sun, Ultra Sun, Shield, and then Scarlet. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so for me, y'all are making me seem like the Pokemon oh. addict because but, I... But, here, uh -huh. but to also add on to that, I've also played Mystery Dungeon. I've played... Uh, the new Pokemon set, which is beautiful, by the way, Jay. I, I I've been I've been meaning to play it for the longest time. So much fun! You you just do what you did back in the good old days. Chuck apples but, at motherfuckers. You no, know, you can chuck apples at motherfuckers, but you don't really chuck at them anymore. Oh. But you get to take pictures of what are essentially terrestrial Pokemon before terrestrialization was a thing. Cause I remember, cause I remember one of my favorite tricks in the, uh, in the lava area was I'd throw an apple at this Charmeleon to make it fall into the volcano and evolve into a Charizard. Yeah. It's, there are a lot of thresholds in new snap that you have to do just to get new pictures of new Pokemon. Gotcha. gotcha. They also have different times you can take pictures because different Pokemon come out at certain times of day. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. And it, it it can be rather tedious to travel back through the biomes to find new Pokemon and take pictures of. It's a lot of repetition. So they use modern Just, 3D models, uh, yeah? So that, that means they do all the all the silly anim idle animations? I mean, you have a Lolan Raichu serpent on its tail. What oh, more could you Oh, man. Brian, Brian, real quick. We discovered mm -hmm. one of the most hilarious idle animations oh. in all of modern Pokemon. So I'm sure you're familiar with the yeah. Pokemon Poliwhirl, right? The, the frog with the mm -hmm. swirl, the swirl belly. So its idle animation yeah. is flossing. It does the little Fortnite dance. It's hilarious. Okay. I thought it, it, it. I thought it was so. I Mick fucking lost it when I saw it because I evolved my Poliwag <laughs> into a 
into a poly world uh the other day uh tiana's beautiful and she was out she was out here just fortnite dancing she was just out here fortnite dancing and i was like wait and then i told tony and tony's like oh my god he's doing the same she's doing the same thing percy did in the in the gif i'm like yeah, yeah she's fortnite dancing and then i took away her fortnite privileges she got angry and became a polyrath wanted to punch to be things fair, no, 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 no. that's not what it, uh, poly world has always had that funky just floss in animation since stadium yep i thought it was hilarious yep but we like, came up we came up we uh, the thing we do when we play scarlet and violet is we come up with personal head cannon for our pokemon and their their, their care state because we treat mm -hmm. all of our pokemon like our children as as, oh, yeah. as you do with all animals um mm -hmm. for me i have watched every single anime from the original up to <laughs> up to current although i have yet to see the i have i still haven't finished ash's final adventure gonna gonna work oh, on that i almost forgot i have watched the anime bits and pieces here and there mm -hmm. and saw the films the secret of coco oh yeah film as a good film oh yeah we watched that we watched that in the discord yes yeah and uh, mm -hmm. also the au uh films those I, are fantastic so so I, so I saw i choose you in the theaters before like it it got out with the the infamous scene so i was there in a theater and an entire theater l literally like was in stunned silence and almost in unison said what the fuck when pikachu started talking no <laughs> it was it was a beautiful moment of of solidarity among pokemon fans absolutely beautiful i wouldn't trade it for the world uh but yeah no i've seen all the films i've watched every anime uh to my chagrin i'm looking at you best wishes Ugh, best wishes epic cringe nothing but cringe silent you're cool irish you become cool eventually not in best wishes no i and love also, you i love you yeah. though silent you're awesome i'm never i'm never gonna hate on you silent's cool but to be fair, the uh, the writers of the anime just just kind of shot themselves in the foot when it came to the uh, black and white anime. <laughs> in terms of my game history, I played every single main series game. Uh, to go to go down the list in order, I'll give you my game and my starter. So I got Red, very much like Tony. It was a gift from my dad uh, that I played a lot during his deployments and he actually helped me out a lot because at the time i was like five so i couldn't really read everything so i kind of just like pressed buttons to see what happened is like okay if i press this button and this thing it does flamethrower got it so uh i had red and i got a charizard because as a kid i was like well you got to get the one on the box right that don't that makes sense so uh silver i got cyndaquil uh, yellow I, I had no choice i got pikachu and i was very angry when i saw that blue got eevee i was like what that was an option oh i forgot about let's go throw that in there too i i played let's go pikachu oh yeah <laughs> yep and i got let's go eevee I remember. yep i, got... I remember because you told me when we were decided to buy the fucking things i would like... not have forgiven you if you did not let me get the easy one, okay? I would not have I forgiven know. you. I know. I know that, Jay. I was like, at least my Pikachu was cool. Listen, Prince was awesome, but Khaleesi beat his ass. Yeah. <laughs> he, he did fine, okay? But Khaleesi... God. She, she was... Names. She was a monster. Her, my boy Valerion, the Black Dread, my shiny Charizard amazing team i'll get you guys from home once i get this motherfucker cory to give me my data back um, oh <laughs> let's not forget the epic game that is uh legends arceus oh, oh and legend arceus is historic yeah, is uh Le legend arceus is historic for tony uh no no not legend arceus is not historic for tony bdsp oh, is historic BDSP, for tony yeah. because tony got his first win off of me in bdsp Tony, yeah, Tony's current record is 1 and 13. Yeah, I forgot about BDSP. I think I have Brilliant Diamond? No, I have Brilliant Diamond, so you had Shining Pearl. Shining Pearl, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, um, 
So what were the saying? Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald. I had Sapphire and I chose the boy Trico because Trico is fucking awesome. Sorry, Trico is up. sorry to see what happens to you when you become an adult and you get too stressed and lose all your cool hair. But, you know, <laughs> rip Trico. You're still my man. Uh, then we have after Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald, it's Diamond and Pearl. My boy Infernape. My boy Infernape, yeah. Chimchar, mm. my man. Mostly because yeah. the anime made me really fall in love with Chimchar because of that epic battle against bitch ass Paul. <laughs> to be fair, Paul was just on some special kind of timing. Oh, yeah. During that. And then, you know, we're not going to talk about the rest of that league because fuck Tobias. Mm. Anyways, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Chimchar is my man. You know, Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald, or, or Diamond and Pearl. That was Diamond and Pearl. Ruby, yeah. Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald, I did Trico. Diamond and Pearl, I did Chimchar. What? After after DP was uh, Black and White? Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, so, in Black 1, I chose Superior. I named her Marie. Uh, she was she was amazing. She was elegant. She was smug. I love her. I will always love her. Uh, then, in Black 2, I went with Embor. And his name was Lu Bu, and he was a legend. He nice. was almost named Red Hair, but I was like, he's not a horse. That doesn't make sense. After Black 2 was X and Y. Yep. X yep. and Y. Uh, my first playthrough, I chose Best Frog for Ninja. His name was Jiraiya. He was he was amazing. Then the second playthrough, I played as uh, Del Fox, who like was a su like surprising like really grew on me i don't hate chespin it's just he's the least cool out of those three um oh i forgot i forgot the remakes i chose leaf green oh and yeah then i chose mm -hmm. uh soul silver then i also picked up omega ruby because here was my philosophy at the time uh-huh i wanted to get remakes that corresponded with the game that i chose same that's what i did so i chose leaf green because well i picked blue yep <laughs> I chose Fire so, Red. <laughs> I cho also chose Soul Silver. Soul Silver was just the option because, well, yeah, there was no, PSP. there were, yeah, and there was no Crystal option. I feel you. I feel you. And then uh, Omega Ruby just made the most sense because my cartridge for Gen Three was Ruby, so picking Omega Ruby made sense to me. Yep, I chose and Alpha then, Sapphire. And since I had Platinum, Shining Pearl just kind of became. The remake that I chose. And then, though... like, uh, you know, some of my favorite moments from Pokemon games, just main series, just talking about regular main series. Uh, you know, these are moments that every Pokemon trainer remembers. Your first battle with Whitney and that nightmare of a mill tank. Jesus mm -hmm. fucking Christ. Charm, Stomp, and Rollout? Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. Who hurts you, and, devs? And then when you play through Gen 4... And you challenge her in the Johto remakes? You can't even cheese her with ghost types because her Miltake has Scrappy as I ability. know! I tried! I got a Ghastly and I was like, I got Chanel, bitch, I'm prepared. What do you mean it has Scrappy? Oh. Whitney's a big memory for me. Uh, the first time I fought Cynthia in fucking Diamond and then in Platinum? Oh my god, she's so hot, but so difficult. Oh, I remember my fight with Cynthia. It was a long, drag-out fight, because I knew ahead of time, and I was well-prepared for any shenanigans on her platinum team. Mm -hmm. I had a relatively easier time on my end. See, <laughs> I see. I played both when they were fresh, and for the first time, it was the Spiritomb that fucked me up. The second time, the Spiritomb was still tough, but my Swampert Shrek was prepared mm. it was all over but now you and i can agree jay her rematch teams in bdsp are fucking peak insane and the remix theme yo mm. shit yeah. slaps it uh, was intense also Just the crazy. volo boss fight in arceus one of the best one oh, of oh, the yeah. best for sure for sure volo easily one of like the top tier characters in all of pokemon i also Just have to give i also have to give big credit because i didn't really talk about 
uh, Sun and Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, which for that, I got Decidueye the first time. He was Ollie. Mm -hmm. My first playthrough of Ultra Moon was uh, also a Decidueye. This time I named him Connor. And then nice. the, the second time around, I finally picked up my boy Incineroar. His name was Dwayne. He was awesome. No, his name was Rick. His name was Rick. He was Rick Flair. He was Rick <laughs> Flair. Nice. Love that guy. He's amazing. Absolute legend. Hall of Famer. Uh, what I will give Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon credit for is Ultra Necrozma. Insane. That was an absurd battle. Absolutely I insane. Because mm -hmm. I did something rather unique with my playthrough of Ultra Sun. Because playing through just regular Sun, I did my normal playthrough. Mm -hmm. Rigamore. I decided that I was going to do a ghost type run for. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh. I've done a couple of challenges in my history of the game. Like, uh, I played, I did a playthrough of Platinum as Barry. Or I named okay. myself Eobard. Mm -hmm. so, that I, nah. so that when I defeated him every time, I could say, it was me, Barry. I remember another. I actually did a Nuzlocke myself. I actually attempted a, at least one for Alola, which was a flying type Nuzlocke. That was pain. I, Poison Nuzlocke. That was pain. No. I did a Nuzlocke with my boy, uh, with my boy David, uh, aka Emerald Phoenix, from back in the day. Uh, we did a. I want to say it was platinum. We did a platinum Nuzlocke and. It was the most painful thing ever because right right before we hit the Elite Four, we lost our boy Ace. Our Infernape got murked by an oh, earthquake. Mm, oof. And my most so successful sad. Nuzlocke, well, the only Nuzlocke that I've completed, actually, mm -hmm. is a shield bug-type Nuzlocke. Oh yeah, Shield has a lot of great buff types because they got like Ore Beetle and shit. Yeah, no, that's solid. Yeah, it's actually quite an impressive run in it with uh, Scarlet and Violet. My current goal is actually completing the Pokedex for not only just Paldea in general, but also the DLC. I'm already one third of the way done with it. I'm actually doing Dex completion for the first time for something other than Shiny Charms because I want to do all the side quests and shit. Um, yep. Those but, pouts, like with Scarlet and Violet, sure there are a lot of uh, hiccups in the game proper, but you could do almost anything you can in these. Yeah, games. I want to. Is... Yeah, I want to take. I want to take the time to actually like talk about Scarlet and Violet because it's a very contentious topic among the Pokemon community. I understand. It's it's you know, a rough game. There are a lot of uh, bugs and glitches and unfortunate stutters and the frame rate's ass in some places, yes. But this oh. is such a unique game in the fact that the style is completely different in terms of the fact that the story is not linear whatsoever. You can do whatever you want, whenever you want, at any time, and that is just, it opens up so many doors and it it definitely, you know, gets rid of the variety complaint that I've had for a couple of years about uh, main series Pokemon games. And mm -hmm. the other thing that I love about it, uh, and it's a feature that Tony and I have been uh, exploring extensively for the past month or so, is the Union Circle. Because in this game, you can actually travel with your friends and capture Pokemon and do raids do quests together it it's like it's what you've always wanted to do in a pokemon game J go on a journey with your friends like you're ash in the gang and it's fucking awesome yes and trying to leave this man throughout three separate maps is listen <laughs> hilarious. listen okay as long as you go to the location first and i can mark you as a destination we're fine we figured out a system and we're good no, and that's what I'm getting at. Before the system we put together, yep. it was like, I have to tell this man, while on my lizard of choice, hopping yep. to make sure that this man saw me. Yep, he, has to, he had to jump like an idiot to signal where he was. It was hilarious. Uh, also, in terms of side games, I play, I've played them all. Uh, Stadium. I even played that stupid uh, racing game for the 3DS. 
Oh my god. We oh, wasted I just my money on that. We, actually, we, we also, for a brief time, played all of us Unite. Oh, yeah, we did. Unite was a blast. Me, it was fun. me, Bry, Tony, and David had so much fun. Me and me and Tony picked it up a little bit after everybody else fell off, and we we were the Plant Bros, and it was fun. Yep, we were nice. But here's another game I remember playing growing up. Mm -hmm. Hey, you Pikachu! Oh man, that's painful. That motherfucker wouldn't mm -hmm. listen whatsoever. Oh yeah, but he uh, wouldn't... that was that was a. The other, the oh, other game, game, the other games that I absolutely love, uh, the Mystery Dungeon series is amazing. I loved Red <laughs> Rescue Team. I loved uh, Prisoners of Sky. Amazing series. I have not played the remake yet, and I am kicking myself for it. Uh, it's fun. I really want to play the remake. And then a very underrated classic, in my opinion, in terms of like side Pokemon games the ranger series i love pokemon ranger it was oh. so much fun had such great world building and man my wrists were so tired from spinning that fucking stylus around to capture these motherfuckers oh another favorite of mine are the coliseum games oh coliseum is an absolute ca uh, absolute classic mirror b legend love that man yeah absolute giga chad yep he did not yep. care or give a fuck about what people thought of him he just did what he did and his ludicolo loved them yep. love that man and that's why mm. we were, and that's why we always respect mirror b but yeah so mm. that was a not so brief journey through our uh, history <laughs> in the wonderful world of pokemon so now we are on to the discussion proper for pokemon concierge now the reason i did uh, such an overextended oh, yeah we'll go to the news in a second but i was just gonna say the reason i did such an overextended intro for this was because the discussion we're gonna have after this segment is probably not gonna be that long and i want to give you guys at least you know your your average yeah. channel chasers episode mm. let's go before we jump into the discussion proper of course we're gonna jump right into the news with brian well people we're also gonna have a little bit of an extended news story and i apologize in advance to future me I do not forgive you. We got to cover it. The Golden Globes were recently. And so we're going to talk about that. We never really got a chance to uh, talk about the uh, nominations because of the strike and all. So yep. if there are any notable ones, I'll point that out as we go across the winners. I've got the list right here. And even though people are talking about, we're not really going to talk about like the drama from the night, like, uh, the fact that uh, Joy Koi kind of bombed. Oh, and you hate to see it. And uh, called out Taylor Swift for no reason. What did he? What did he call out Taylor Swift for? Like, what did he say? What did he say to Taylor? We're gonna see less cutaways to her than in the NFL. Damn! Why you gotta do that to Taylor, man? This isn't just me being a Swifty, but what did Taylor do to you? You, you know, but, Taylor has a history with award shows, bro. But the cool thing is, did you ever see the Golden Globes? No, I didn't. You know who else was sitting right next to her? Who was also nominated for an award? Her girl Selena. Nice. Oh, for only murderers so, in the building. Yep. Nice. Taylor was nominated for. Uh, the theatrical run of uh, the Eras Tour. Oh, I've been I've been wanting to see that honestly. <laughs> it's it the only way I'd be able to afford the Eras Tour. I'm gonna start off with best performance from a male actor in a supporting role on TV. Do not know if you guys have watched Succession. I have. I love Succession. One of the but, best uh, shows I've seen in like years. Matthew McFadden. I'm sorry, um, I know I only know them by character names. It doesn't say their character names. Damn it. But uh the only like notable other people that he beat out were uh I did not know that he was in the bear, Ebon Mas Bakram. 
Micro from Netflix. Oh yeah, yeah. He he's a sous chef in the Bear. Yeah. Oh well, he got nominated. Cool. And he's then good. also, I think this is his first time being nominated. James Marsden. Oh. oh. And he got nominated for playing an exaggerated version of himself. <laughs> good for him. Good for Jury him. duty. One that had a lot more contention was a supporting role for female on mm-hmm. TV. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The winner was Ele- Elizabeth Debicki for The Crown. Good. Uh, I don't know if you guys have been keeping up with The Crown, but it 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 get, it gets better no. the further it goes because it just get, it gets juicier. The Di- yo the Diana season. Ah. Let me tell but, uh, you, that was that's a mess. She beat out Abby Elliott for The Bear and uh, Christina Ricci for Yellow Jackets. And I've heard nothing. Surprise, I've heard nothing but good things about Yellow Jackets. And the biggest surprise, she beat out Meryl Streep. Really? What? <laughs> what was Meryl Streep in? Only Murders in the Building. Oh yeah, that's right. She was. I forgot. She gets a uh, dude. A lot of the times when Meryl Streep is in a role, I don't see Meryl Streep. That's just how good she is. Yeah. Then a uh, best performance from male actor in the limited series, anthology, or motion picture made for TV. Mm-hmm. Stephen Yoon for Beef. Nice. Beef was great. If y'all haven't seen Beef but- yet, you definitely should. It was hilarious. So much but petty. beat out John Hamm for Fargo. Oh, damn. I should... You know, I haven't watched Fargo in the longest time. He beat out David Oyelowo for Bass Reeves. Damn. Oh, really? And also, uh, Matt Bomer for a show that's, I believe, currently going on or just ended called Fellow Travelers. Oh, I thought you were going to say it's Doom Patrol. A, no. This one is more the Academy's style. It's a, uh, period piece about uh the political world in i think it was like the 70s 80s oh so like where it was tricky it dick was reagan like, era just like and like just like the treacle start of the like gay rights movement so oh, oh okay okay and so he plays like a government agent who's like in the closet makes sense but uh Best performance from a female in a limited series anthology or made for TV movie. <laughs> Ali Wong for beef. Hell yeah, man. Real quick, you do not know how badly during that Matt Bomber part I was fighting the urge to make a George Santos joke. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, she beat out uh, Juno Temple for Fargo, Rachel Wise for Dead Ringers. I've heard and, good things about uh, Dead Ringers. The big one, she beat out Elizabeth Olsen for Love and Death. Oh, shit. Yeah. Elizabeth Olsen was Love great as candy. Is, yep. And then also, uh, your favorite actress, Jay, Brie Larson. You know, Brian, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes in moments like these, I really question our friendship. <laughs> but, yeah. Moving, Moving on. It's not the first time today I've upset you, and it might not be the last. I don't like that. Uh, that's ominous, Brian. I don't like that. <laughs> <very ominous>. well, <laughs> well, I just mean I'm not going to make any uh, false guarantees. Okay, fair enough. But best performance from a male actor in a musical or comedy TV show. Mm-hmm. Walter Goggins. Jeremy Allen White, the bear. Oh, nice. Good for him. Yep. He he is one he of the few, he's one of the few Jeremys in Hollywood that I actually like. Him and Jeremy Jordan, those are the only two. He beat out Bill Hader for the last season of Barry. Oh, I didn't even oh, I didn't watch the last season of Barry. Barry, you're such a good actor, Barry. And then uh, Jason Sudeikis for the last season of Ted Lasso. What? He, Jason Sudeikis lost. Yeah, I mean Jeremy and Allen White the only Jason. is good. Oh, Bateman for fucking uh, Ar- no. uh oh, what you call it? Uh, Siegel. Oh, I-, I thought we were talking about uh, Bateman for uh, but no, Ozark ended a while ago. Never mind. Uh, Jason Siegel. Oh, what was Siegel in? He's a night TV show called Shrinking. 
Uh -huh. where he plays a shrink along with Harrison Ford. Oh! And then also uh, the iconic du duo, both of them nominated Martin Short and Steve Martin for Only Murders. I'm honestly shocked that Walter Goggins was not in this for Righteous Gemstones. Yeah. But uh, the actress for the same category, Best Actress, mm -hmm. Ayo Debris for The Bear. Oh! Cool, cool. She beat out Ella Fanning for The Great. The Great was solid. Natasha, Natasha Leone for Poker Face. Poker Face is great. Mm -hmm. Quinta Brunson for Abbott Elementary. Now, to be fair, Quinta Brunson cleaned up last year. So, yeah. it's fine. She's got plenty of Golden we Globes. We mentioned it before. Selena for Only Murders. Mm-hmm. And the last one that I'm surprised she beat out, Rachel Brosnahan for Marvelous Miss Maisel. What? A time? Man, you, I would have expected because it was the final season, which was a great final season, by the way. None of the Amy Sherman Palladino final season bullshit that I'm used to with like Gilmore nice. Girls and shit. Nice. And then uh, Best Actor in a Drama Series. Mm-hmm. Surprised everyone here, but good for him. Kieran Culkin. What was he in? For Succession. Oh wait, I know who I know who Kieran Culkin played. Now that's deserved. Yep, he beat out Brian Cox for the same show, and uh, Dominic West for The Crown. Dominic and West did also, a really good job in The Crown. And also Gary Ullman for a thing called Slow Horses. And the big one, Pedro Pascal for The Last of Us. Wow. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, yep. well, awards it, don't really give that much love to genre shows unless they're like prestige, I know. big prestige genre but, shows like GOT. The funny thing is, is mm -hmm. in, in his acceptance speech, Kieran actually said, suck it, Pedro. That's hilarious. <laughs> That is that is funny. And he sh he should have you know what he should have said. He should have said, "Who's your what? daddy now, Pedro?" And that's what I would have said. The one, the one that has a lot of good people in it, best actress for a drama series, and the one was uh, Sarah Snook for Succession. Also deserved. Succession is a fucking right. masterpiece, y'all. A masterpiece of white people being extremely messy. If you want to watch rich white people do underhanded rich white people things, watch Succession. But get this. All the people that she beat out. Okay. Bella Ramsey for The Last of Us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Emma Stone for her new show, The Curse. Never, well, I've never seen it. I actually have never heard about this one. From what I heard, it's about this couple that's doing this, like, ITV-esque renovations show. Mm -hmm. But then the house turns out to be haunted. Oh, shit. Well, you know, but, it's a white couple. But also beat out Helen Mirren for 1923. Idella Stanton for The Crown. Damn. And Carrie Russell for The Diplomat. I've heard good things about The Diplomat. Yeah. Uh, best limited series anthology or made-for-TV movie... Beef. Of course. Well deserved. And uh, I mean, some of the notable I mean, things... still, Love and Death... Love and Death would have been my second pick, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Well, Love and Death wasn't even nominated. What? Mm -hmm. That's a crime. Uh, the, nom the nominations were Beef, Lessons in Chemistry, which is the Brie Larson show. Yeah, Apple TV keeps telling me I need to watch it, but I'm not gonna. You're not gonna force me, Apple TV. Fellow Travelers, which I already told you about. Mm -hmm. Fargo, Daisy Jones and the Six. What the fuck is Daisy Jones and the Six? I've never heard of this one. It, it follows the fictional li lives of an like sixties band. It's done like behind the music style. Oh, okay. Hmm. And then all the light we cannot see, which is basically about a blind girl trying to survive the holocaust damn oh 
That's oh, that's usually a war. That's a that screams a war yeah. bait. Yeah, that that's def- why that's why I was surprised. But uh, best TV show, musical or comedy. Mm-hmm. The Bear. Yep. Yep. I've and only seen one season, Abbott. but it's amazing. Nice. He beat out Abbott Elementary, Barry, Jury Duty, Only Murders in the Building, and Ted Lasso. I I'm still shocked. Ted Lasso hasn't won anything. Ted Lasso so good. I think he did last year. Uh th- that makes sense then. Because uh, like you know, I totally legally watched all all the seasons. The best drama show, Succession. Duh. Notable things that it beat out were 1923, The Crown, and The Last of Us. See, I don't know if I'm ready to tr- uh, to try out another year named uh, Taylor Sheridan show. It looks great, but like Brian, you were you weren't there when we watched 1883. No, I <laughs> but uh, the emotional wreckage but, is uh, real. Best song for emotion, original song for a motion picture. Mm-hmm. What was I made for, Barbie? Great! It's one of my favorite numbers. Indeed. And uh, it beat out a couple other things from Barbie. A couple other things that you'd expect for the normal stuff. I won't go into it. What about uh, but also, did any of the songs from uh, Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes make it? Because like, that was kind of like nope. a semi-musical. What the? Damn. Nope. You know what did make it? What? Peaches, 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 peaches. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> really? Yes. <laughs> That's wild. Oh. Man. Yes. Man, uh, Rachel Zegler got robbed. Much more fun. Uh, Oppenheimer won best score. Makes sense. It was a very good score. Only other notable thing beyond the usual stuff that's in that category is Across the Spider-Verse. Like you notice, we're going into motion picture stuff. Mm-hmm. Best director, Christopher Nolan. Duh. He beat out Greta Gerwin. Martin Scorsese. I still need to uh, see uh, Killer to the Flower Moon at some point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, Celine Song, who directed the indie darling Past Lies. I've heard great things about that one. Yeah. And also, uh, Yorgos Lansimus, uh, he directed Poor Things. Oh, I've heard great that things about that Emma, one, too. That new Emma Stone movie? Yep. I've heard good things about poor things as well. Basically, a Frankenstein creature. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's uh, it's like a modern reframing of Frankenstein. Yeah, uh, which might actually come up again, believe it or not. Oh, but uh, best performance from a male actor in a supporting role in a motion picture, RDJ. Oppenheimer. Yeah, you know what's funny? Mm-hmm. He was like, he's in it for like a total of maybe thirty minutes. It's supporting actor, so yeah. Yeah, it's impactful. Don't get me wrong. He killed it. But I'm just saying, it's it's but it's funny because that movie's long as fuck. He beat out Mark Ruffalo, William Defoe, Ryan Gosling, and De Niro. Oh, really? And, and the biggest surprise here, did not expect to see him on this list. Mm-hmm. Charles Melton. What was Charles Melton? He was in a movie with Julianne Moore called May December. Oh, I've heard a lot of good things about May December because that's she teamed up with the the, the one director that she's always working with. Apparently, he was in it and he got a Golden Globes nomination. You guys, you, you guys, you guys, you guys know what May December is, right? So May December is this movie about a about a chick that Julian so Julianne Moore plays this chick who is an actress who is playing a woman in a biopic movie about a woman who seduced her student and then after she got out of prison she married said student mm. and had a family and everything yeah very interesting movie i haven't seen it i've heard everybody talk about it there's a lot of buzz behind it i really want to see it because uh Julie, uh, Julianne Moore, and I don't remember this director's name, but the director have done some really good shit. Nice. But uh, best supporting female in a motion picture, Divine jo- Joy Randolph. Nice. The Holdovers. Nice. Yeah, you, t- you, she, you, yeah, you, I like that you really talked that one up. 
she was also a big surprise because she's not really in the trailer. This is a, yeah, this is a good follow up to the New Year's episode, actually. Huh. Yeah, that's why I decided to go in a little bit more detail. Mm -hmm. But uh, she beat out Danielle Brooks for the color purple. Which I've heard is actually uh, really good, but it's only good if you're a theater person. Like, because, like, mm -hmm. a lot of people were caught off guard with the fact that it's actually cl much closer to the Broadway play, which was also a musical. Mm hmm And also by the fact that uh, some of the subtext, they actually made text. Yep. And they made songs about it. She beat out other people, like Emily Blunt for Oppenheimer. Oh, she was great in there. Julianne Moore for May, December. And Rosamund Pike. For uh, Saltburn. I've heard really good things about Saltburn. I've heard good, but weird things. Yeah, about but that like, it's, it, it, it seems like the type of art house shit that is up my alley. Best male actor in a motion picture, musical, or comedy Paul Giamatti, The Holdovers. All right. He beat out Jeffrey Wright for American Fiction. I heard good things about American Fiction. Yep. Joaquin Phoenix for Bo is Afraid. Oh, I, you know, after we saw that trailer, I really wanted to see that one. Matt Damon for Air. I've heard good things about Air. Nicolas Cage for Dream Scenario. Oh, oh man, I that was one I also meant to go see at some point. Well, it's going to be on uh, Max because it's A24. Oh, we're, we're adding that to the queue. And I yeah, don't care what I don't lastly, care what it's actually called. From now on, in my personal head canon, it's called I Dream of Nick. I Dream of Nikki. Mm -hmm. To go with I Dream of Nikki. And then the Jamie. last one is uh, Timothy Chalamet for Wonka. People hate on Wonka for no reason. It's a very good, like heartwarming holiday movie. Honestly, it's much closer to the Gene Wilder one. Than the uh, honestly, honestly terrifying and unsettling <laughs> Johnny Depp one, and also it does this. its own thing too, and like it also has the, like the, the the right proper like over the top cartoony evil villains for your you know your family mm. Christmas movie. It's great. I mean, yeah. Um, if we're talking about yeah. individuals that want to do like shady corporate stuff because they are just greedy as hell oh yeah then there you go oh yeah no it, it is mm -hmm. it is like cartoon oil baron levels of evil corporate douchebaggery but it's great uh, epic yeah best female for a motion picture musical or comedy okay emma stone poor things nice okay. then uh, other notable people for this is fantasia barino oh for the color purple. Yeah, I heard Fantasia really killed it. And like because of the color purple, her one of her uh, like most classic songs has been blowing up on TikTok. Also in it was uh, Jennifer Lawrence for No Hard Feelings. Nice. She uh, was hilarious. Margot Robbie for Barbie. Great. And Natalie Portman, who's also in May December. Yeah, she so Natalie Portman plays the uh like plays the actress uh I think Julianne Moore plays the uh plays the actual like former teacher oh okay cool yep. best performance from a male actor in a motion picture mm -hmm. killian murphy oppenheimer nice mm -hmm. that one's a okay. dub but great well deserved yeah yeah especially since uh he was getting dogged on by uh bradley cooper yeah right but we won't get into that uh the people that he beat out were uh, Barry Coogan for Saltburn. Mm -hmm. Didn't know Andrew Scott for uh, All of Us Strangers, which, by the way, if that name doesn't sound familiar to you. No, I know. Uh, wait, no, I'm thinking of Adam Scott, not Andrew Scott. Andrew Scott is uh, the the Stephen Moffat uh, Moriarty. Oh. Um, him. I thought. See, I thought that. I see. I for some reason I thought that was Adam Scott, the dude from Fleabag. No. Uh, yeah. Uh, he's also in Fleabag. Oh. His name is Andrew. Scott. Oh, it's Andrew. Scott. For some reason, I thought his name was Adam. 
Adam Scott is the dude from uh, Parks and Rec. Oh, see, that's where it is. That's the confusion. Yeah, Lee, he beat out DiCaprio. Wow. I mean, <laughs> Leo, Leo got his one. He's fine. Yeah, he'll be good. And then uh, Coleman Domingo for Rustin. Never heard of this one. It's a, uh, it's made for streaming movie. I think it was on Netflix. Mm -hmm. uh, the Obamas produced it. It's about uh, James Rustin, the dude who was um, the secret script writer for for uh, Martin Luther King. Oh, I, I have heard of this. But he he didn't get a lot of press because he was also openly gay. Uh-huh. Yep. Yep. I do remember hearing about it. And uh, the guy who played him, Coleman, right here, you also know him from something else, Jay. Oh? He's Ali in um, Euphoria. Oh, shit! That, spe that one-shot special... Gave me so much hope mm -hmm. that was dashed away as soon as I actually watched season two. And there's also uh, rumors that uh, he might be the person that Marvel's going for for a recast King. That would be great. Yep. But uh, moving on to best female actor in a motion picture, Lily Gladstone for Killers of the Flower Moon. Good for her! <laughs> Big Native American dub. Let's go. Most of these I have not heard about. Um, but uh, Annette Benning for Nyad. Never heard of that. I don't know what that is. Also, uh, Greta Lee for Past Lives, which good for her for at least getting a nomination. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then also uh, Carrie Mulligan. Good actress. Don't know if I trust the movie that she's in. What was the movie? Uh. Maestro, the Bradley Cooper one where he broke, wore the prosthetic nose. Oh. Yeah. Then, uh, best cinematic and box office achievement? Barbie. Duh. I'm, su I'm surprised Oppie isn't right there with her. Had some stiff competition, though. Guardians 3, John Wick 4, The Latest Mission Impossible, Oppenheimer, Across the Spider-Verse, The Mark... Super Mario movie and Taylor Swift the Era Tour. You know what's crazy? I own I there are only two movies on that list that I haven't seen. Yeah. And then uh best animated picture, The Boy and the Heron. I I wanted to see that. I wanted to see the animation for that I own looks Miyazaki's amazing. Latest. Mhm. Mm I don't uh, like I don't like Miyazaki, features... but I I like I like the work, but it beat out uh, Elemental. Elemental Mario, was good. Wish, good. Across the Spider Verse. Fuck Wish, fuck it with a ten foot pole. Across the Spider Verse, and then the also Japanese hit of the year, Susume. Oh, I saw Susume. Susume solid. Best uh, motion picture, musical or comedy. Poor things. Mm hmm. The other nominees were Air, American Fiction, Barbie, May, December, and The Holdovers. Nice. And then the last one for our thing, Best Motion Picture Drama. Mm-hmm. This one, I'll start with the nominees. All right. The Zone of the Internet, which I have never heard of. Never heard of it all. Maestro. Mm-hmm. Past Lives. Mm-hmm. Anatomy of the Fall, mm -hmm. which... I've, is a I've heard of that movie one. That's been doing real. Well. Yep, I've and heard that of that one. That one won uh, best non-English film, by the way. Makes sense. Uh, Killers of the Flower Moon. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. And the winner, Oppenheimer. And a duh. I was like, I was like, all right, where, when are you when you saying Oppenheimer? We know Oppenheimer won, but I'm not saying that Ooh. to the dog on Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer is phenomenal. It's That's probably it, it's probably my favorite biopic of the it's probably my favorite biopic of last year and uh it's it's you a, were about to say this year I was and then I was like wait we're in 2024 we 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 moved on it's a new season I'm I'm just giving you shit because you gave me shit last episode oh yeah I mean you know it's expected 
I mean, it's why Oppenheimer was all over uh, all over my uh, talking points for uh, you know mm -hmm. the the New Year episode. I fucking love that movie. Yeah, like Napoleon but, uh, was great, but like Oppenheimer was so damn engaging. That's it for uh, the news. All right, so uh, we are going to check our watches because I feel like it is that time once again. It is screen time. Screen time is that segment of the podcast for those of you who are brand new for this brand new season where the guys and I all talk about the various pieces of media we've been consuming in between podcast episodes. That can range from TV shows we don't have time to cover, movies, uh, video games, books, anime, all that stuff. So we'll start with you, Brian. What have you been consuming all in right. between podcast episodes? Not much because I've been spending editing the last episode, but uh, I did see the, uh, first of all, the latest episode of uh, Dirty Laundry. Mm -hmm. This one was interesting because... What were some of the highlights from this one? My, uh, I'm trying to get up my list of mm -hmm. who was in it. It was uh, Persephone Valentine, which don't know if you know who that is. Nope. She is a trans uh, actress, who, comedian who has been... Uh, making her way recently in the TTRPG scene. Uh, most notably, she was in uh, The Seven, which is one of the Dimension 20s. Oh. Oddly enough, um, professional fullback, Johnny Stanton. Oh, shit. Mika Burton, which is uh, LeVar Burton's daughter. Oh, I was, I, I, I was going to say, is she related to LeVar Burton? Did you answer my question? Yeah. But, uh, she has also been making a name for herself in the TTRPG world. Cool. Like, she's big in it. Like, she's one of the go-to people that uh, Wizards of the Coast use. But, uh, and then lastly, Matthew Mercer. Nice. And It's funny, because I'm wearing the, stuff, the law hat. <laughs> some of the stuff were like, uh, who left who left a pound of ground beef in their car for, I think they said a month. Oh my god. That car must Good smell Lord. like ass. And uh, who performed musical theater in front of Russian oligarchs? I feel like that's Mercer. That that feels like a Mercer thing. And then the last one is uh, who blamed sex noises on video games? <laughs> that also sounds like a Mercer thing. That is... You'll have to watch to find out. But, All uh, right. Okay, Speaking yeah. about um, internet things, I didn't realize that this was out already. So it, the video is a couple weeks old, but I just watched it. And that is uh, Haley Whipjack, who I talked about before, did uh, Once Upon a Time, the season one uh, video essay. Uh huh. Now, season two. How oh, cool. Oh, uh, season. I was gonna say, season two. two is where shit gets real fucky. Season one is relatively normal. Season two is where we get introduced to characters like Neil, Tamara, and Hook, right? Because uh, two is yeah. the pan season. Nope. No, it's three? Three is the pan season. Oh. But Hook, the cliffhanger for season two is them going to Neverland. Right, right, right. Okay, I remember now. That's I'm... the cliffhanger. Mm hmm. Because Tamara and once his face stole Henry and took him to Neverland. Yep, yep, yep. But it's also where we find out about Gold being the crocodile. Yep. Oh, uh, man. We also get introduced to the weirdly lovable character of Lacey. I'm not remembering Lacey at all. Lacey was was Belle's story personality that didn't come out originally. Oh! That she was in the prison. Oh! Well, see, I see so much of the, so much of the show she was Belle, I forgot she had a story person persona. The thing is, is she initially didn't because during the whole entire story thing, she was just trapped in Regina's prison thing. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. But, uh, but then, once some magic fuckery happens, she finally gets her personality. Also, Tony, you're going to get a kick out of this. Uh, Belle in Once Upon a Time was Australian. Or at least she was played by an Australian actress, so she had an Australian accent. Hilarious. 
Absolutely. It was the Australian chick from Lost. Yep. I figured much. We also got introduced to, uh, I believe her name's Cora. Regina's mom. Right, right. The, the the super evil queen. The one who we later find out, spoiler alert, is also the queen of hearts. Yep, and she wanted to fuck Rumpel, right? Oh yeah, she wanted to fuck Rumpel, but as Rose McGowan. Yep. Wow. Oh. Rose McGowan played the younger version of her. Yep. Yeah, Once Upon a Time is very Yeah, Once Upon a Time is very confusing and it's also very Hey, that guy was in this. Yeah. Uh. It's also where we uh got the quick write off for August, aka the Mad Hatter, because he's now starting to pop off in the MCU. Wasn't August Pinocchio? Well, whoever Mad Hatter was. I forgot his name now. Yep. But August was Pinocchio, you're right. For most of this season, he's he's just wood. Yep. And that's not a euphemism. I mean, you know, if you if you if you ask Emma. Oh yeah, but uh, we also got introduced to possibly once upon a time Mushu. Wait, when and did then when, wait, kill him. when did that happen? I don't remember Mushu showing up at all. I remember Mulan. Uh, when August goes to China. Mm-hmm. And meets Tamara there. They're both trying to make a deal with the dragon. Oh, oh! See when you That's why when, I said maybe Mushu. when you see when you say it out loud, it all comes rushing back. I just said maybe Mushu because he's called the dragon. Man, once upon a time was a wild oh, yeah. experience. And this was also the season where they introduced the. Uh, Snow has darkness in her oh, heart. Yeah, the, oh yeah, oh yeah, the tainted heart arc for Snow. I remember that. Yeah, it's the, it started here. Wasn't that the like that was the that was made because they needed to shelve her for a little bit because she was pregnant, right? I don't know, maybe because the reason why it happened is because she basically killed Cora. Yep, she took she lied to Regina. Well, first she tainted Cora's heart, and then got Regina to put the heart back in. It makes sense. Oh, yeah, if a you more, if, 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 if you, you if you know the actual rules of Once Upon a Time, this does not sound like complete gibberish. But yeah, I remember because um, like uh, she found out that Cora was the reason for all the bullshit that happened to Snow indirectly because she was the one who fucked up Regina's life. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. I remember. And then kept pushing for Regina to become her stepmom. That was actually a very good twist. This was one once upon a time was had still some really good, consistent drama. Yeah, but it also had some like missteps. Uh, Haley does really good job. She dresses in costume for this, like three plus hour re video essay, mm -hmm. and. Does a really good job. It at one point she goes from dressing like a prince to dressing like a princess. Nice. And has like a big ball gown and everything. And it's like, so uh I guess I'm gonna stand for this half of the video because there's no way in hell I can sit in this dress. Understandable. I did not think this through. Understandable. <laughs> Meanwhile, her cat keeps coming in, wanting to be held. So she's in this elegant ball gown. Holding her cat, recapping Once Upon a Time. Listen, I would need to hold an animal to recap Once Upon a Time without losing my mind. And, well, yeah, because there are some low parts in it. Like, one of the ones that I didn't really fully think through until she pointed it out. Okay, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready for this. When when they do the recap with Neil and Emma. Uh-huh. And they show when they first meet. Mm-hmm. Story-wise, they tell us. That she's 17 and he's early 20s. Uh-huh. Yet, they're played by the same exact actors as modern times. Yeah, that is... Holy shit, you're right! What? The, the only thing they did for Emma was give her, I think, no or little makeup and glasses. I was just saying, they gave her glasses and they changed her hair a little bit. Like they did the ninety. Oh, that was the nineties uggification. That was it. <laughs> That's all they did to make you think that a woman that is in her early 
thirties to look like a seventeen year old. To be fair, all I need to look like a seventeen year old is to shave. I know. But also it was just a little bit jarring. Oh yeah, no, I understand. And weird. But that's the show in a nutshell, so I'll just leave it there. Go watch the if you like video essays. And you like fuckery, go watch Haley with I, I want you, like, if if we get a chance to, we gotta tell Cap to watch that shit at 1.5 times speed so that he can so he can see that we weren't bullshitting at all during that, like, mm -hmm. hour and a half conversation. Oh, yeah. And uh, then I actually watched one episode of an anime that we possibly can discuss later. I think it's Deliciousness in Dungeon. It's Delicious in Dungeon. I watched the first episode of Delicious that, actually, today. Oh my god, I think we need to cover it. 100%! Um, Tony, it, Tony, Tony. I, I, I got this one, Brian. Tony, Tony, Tony. Uh, my man, uh, my pal, uh -huh. my friend. Mm -hmm. do, you like, do you like anime food porn? Yes. Do you like Studio Trigger? Yes. Do you like Studio Trigger animation? Where it's just anime food porn and occasional action where they fight monsters to make the anime food porn. Yeah. This show is amazing. Yeah. I didn't know I, I needed I, Studio Trigger food porn until yes. I saw this. I know sometimes, especially in fantasy shows, we try to look to pinpoint to see who's the me character, who's the J character. Who's the Tony character. The, <laughs> yeah. The lead to have elements of our kind of characters but it's nothing permanent yeah I, honestly uh, i was like, i was feeling uh, i was feeling homegirl uh nami yeah well yeah. she's and not she's not nami main... but you know she's voiced by live action nami emily rudd the elven or half elven wizard mm -hmm. uh i was kind of feeling the Human, either paladin or fighter, they haven't really been. Yeah, I yet. wasn't. Yeah, I wasn't sure fighter. about that either. Even those are kind of iffy. I will say, the dwarf is one thousand percent a Tony character. Yup, I was just about to say, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. You're you're gonna you're gonna love you're gonna love that guy, Tony. You're gonna absolutely love that guy. Well, mm -hmm. th that one that one has been elevated to the friend queue. We might we might e we might even we might even watch we might even watch it once we uh, finish up our wa uh, monarch watch along. Yeah, which we will start again soon. I wanted to uh, just add how much of a Tony character we talk in here. I would oh I, would, my. I I would say about uh what thousand and ten percent. Is it on the level of a Stella or a uh, any no, other character? It's it's like it's not anything like that. It's like a it's like a done with everybody's bullshit foodie. Bet let's go. <laughs> Who knows how to cook the most weird, obscure shit? Because he has like the weirdest fucking palate, and everybody questions it. But then they try it, and they're like, what the fuck? This actually tastes good. And, because mm -hmm. you don't mind spoilers, Tony, I think they said that he's dedicated, like, a decade of his life just to cooking monsters. Yep. Respect he, that, he's man. A dwarf. He's a dwarf, so if he wants to, like, dedicate his life to... Just cooking epic things. Respect. The shout, shout, out, oh, yeah. shout out to a campaign that's coming up. I'm going to be dedicating my life to fucking monsters. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> anyway, the last thing that I wanted to point out in my screen time was just, uh, I had seen him here and there on TikTok and on YouTube shorts, but finally checked his music out. Mm -hmm. um, Connor Prince. Oh, I've, I've, heard I've, about I've, him. I've listened to Connor Prince, at least on TikTok. His music is really good. Oh, yeah. The snippets I've heard are pretty he's, awesome. Yeah, he's a rapper, and one of his songs, Spinning, he has the lyrics. I actually, I think I'm, I did an open verse challenge to one of his things. Uh, I think it was like, I'm oh, fine, wow. or something nice. like that. Yeah, yeah. In his, in his song, Spinning, he does the line, I make paper like I'm Dunder Mifflin. <laughs> he does a lot, he does, he also does a lot of like, um, mental health positivity rap which you know appreciate that yeah like also amp your stuff 
mm-hmm. self up. Mm-hmm. Uh, like a song called Straight A's, where it's just about like uh, Your anxiety. <laughs> well, no, this one is about being cool, but also following the rules. Ah. And I pointed this song out because uh, one line in particular that I liked got the juice and I made a brand off of it like a minute made. Nice, nice. That was that's a solid bar. Anyway, that's that's my list. I will be right back. All right. So, I'll go next uh cuz I'm actually very much in the similar vein to Brian. Uh some of the stuff I checked out, I watched uh quite a few video essays uh, in the past week. One of them was the final part of Quentin Review's epic saga of the Nickelodeon sitcom universe, the, uh, what, six-hour finale to the Sam and Cat part of the saga, the decline of Sam and Cat. This, this was an endeavor. Like, this man put in work. Like, I watched this shit at 1.5 speed, but, like, I was engrossed the entire time. I did not, I did not take breaks. <laughs> I didn't go back and watch other things. I had this on the whole time. And one of the, one of the big things that connects to something else uh, that I have on screen time is, uh, towards the end of it, uh, he, you know, stops with the jokes and the funnies, and he talks about, he addresses the elephant in the room uh, with Salmon Cat. Which, of course, if you're familiar with a lot of the uh, -the behind-the-scenes drama with Sam and Kat, you know, the show was going on when Jeanette's mother passed away. And so Quentin, of course, he was like, he talks about it and he was like, I didn't know if I was going to talk about this because, you know, part of me was like, this isn't my story to tell. But But then eventually I decided... My platform is pretty huge and I feel like I would be doing Jeanette a disservice without uh, without like giving it some time and showing that it is important to talk about these kinds of things. So essentially he addresses like the decline of Sam and Cat because of, you know, Ariana's growing music career and of course the ever growing stress that Jeanette was going through with, you know, her mother basically being at the end of her life due to uh due to a, ca- a cancer relapse and then he read excerpts from her book like kind of detailing it from Jeanette herself including some snippets from the audiobook from her uh autobiography uh i'm glad my mom died and my god this shit is heavy so there was a reason i didn't buy the audiobook when it first came out and that was because i was in a really big depression rut and i knew i couldn't handle it if i had listened to it then but after watching this video I I got up the courage. I had three more credits left from my year subscription to Audible, and I got. I'm oh. glad my mom died. And my God, this book is amazing. Jeanette, as a writer, is phenomenal because what she does is she. It's an autobiography, but it's told from this first person omniscient perspective where it feels more like Jeanette telling a story it almost feels like you know how in shows like everybody hates Chris and like shit mm-hmm. like that where you're where they're like the semi autobiographical shows and you have like yeah. the, the moments where the uh, the actual actor like talks like talks to the camera and gets like serious for a second that's the entirety of this book i only just started it i'm like two chapters in and already i'm like god damn this poor girl because it it Mm talks uh the first couple chapters talk about her relationship with religion uh she's ex-mormon or i ex uh yeah well ex-mormon you know uh uh, church of jesus christ latter-day saints uh, mm. t- talks about how you know religion was a personal comfort for her because when her mom uh, was first going through cancer they went to church a lot and church was the one time a week where she could uh where her and her brothers could 
actually be somewhere away from their house, which was like uh, her mom was an extreme hoarder because she was constantly paranoid about missing moments so she would hold on to all these things so their their house was literally filled to the brim with trash to the point where Jeanette her brothers and her grandparents had to sleep in mats in the hallway in uh, gym mats in the hallway because there was no room to get into their actual bedrooms like yo this is horrifying but so gripping like the storytelling is amazing and Jeanette mm -hmm. is the one who reads the audiobook herself and there are genuine moments in it where she breaks when reading and it's just like my god yo yeah like um, it's I haven't, wild I haven't read it or listened to the audio I've heard interviews yeah like I had only heard interviews up to this point as well that's why I was like I definitely want to hear it but then after watching the video I was like I gotta get it now I have to get it to support her she deserves this I have a credit so fuck it like, she was talking with uh, Drew Barrymore right yeah Jada. oh yeah well, Jada and Drew Barrymore yeah mm -hmm. and in the Jada one she goes into like what happened when her mom found out that she got her first tattoo yep her first tattoo uh, uh, the, the, uh like i in the video i saw an expert excerpt about her like mourning the fact that she got her first period because like her mother had this whole thing about like constantly infantilizing her keeping her as a little girl and so when the person on set for when the onset like teacher from iCarly like you know got her a pad and was like congratulations Jeanette she became a woman like outside she smiled and was like thank you but inside she was screaming and she was like oh no I failed my mother what am I gonna do you know I've let her down you know I mm -hmm. I, I can't make her happy anymore and like mm -hmm. you know I. I'm, I was nowhere near this level, but I definitely resonate with a lot of that because my mom is one of the most important people in my life. And it was, oh my God, just to hear that a mother was capable of some of the shit that she did really put a lot of the things that like, you know, I have problems with in my own life into really stark perspective. So I'm very thankful for that. Very good read. Highly recommend it. Like, it is a master class in narrative storytelling. Straight up. Mm -hmm. Like, Tony, honestly, I think, yeah. like, if you read that, you you could get a, you could get a lot out of like translating this into like Ashton's perspective on things for your project. Mm. Like, I really do recommend it on like that high of a level. In lighter notes, I watched a couple other video essays from uh, this girl named Athena. I don't remember what her YouTube channel name is called, but I'll, I'll look it up later. Uh, she, what she specializes in is doing uh, deep dive lore video essays on kids shows. And they're like, you know, 45 minutes to an hour and a half long. Uh, the one, uh, I watched three of them. One of them was on the Lion Guard which was a show that I watched with my niece, but I didn't really pay attention to because like I was just babysitting, but the lore is fucking deep and they actually make it make sense with uh, Lion King too. I was like, well, shit, good for you. Also, Timon and Pumbaa got to a, like, got to have their adopted gay baby. Uh, he was a honey badger. He's cool. I remember him. He was, uh, his name was uh, Zuma or something like that. Oh no, Bunga, nice. Bunga. He was cool. I liked him. He was a honey badger. He didn't nice. give a fuck. He was cool. Technically, uh, their second kid. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Simba was their first kid. Simba was their first kid. Uh, but uh, the other ones were two shows that I also watched with my niece when she was a toddler. Uh, but I actually paid attention to these two. And I forgot how intense the lore is for both of them. And the spin-off show goes way too hard for a kid's show. The shows I'm referring to are Sophia the First and its spin-off, mm. Elena of Avalor. Sophia the First is really fucking interesting, actually, because like it ties Disney lore together. 
because Sophia is in the pilot is gifted this amulet that like helps her with a problem slash moral lesson of the week and the amulet has amulet has several different powers and one of them is she can summon a Disney princess to give her advice on her particular problem and it heavily hints at the fact that like her kingdom is set at a far later time than the rest of the Disney princesses because it's heavily implied that the Disney uh, Disney uh, princesses that are summoned by the amulet are ghosts like oh, actual yeah. like dead yeah. Disney princesses so they're force ghosts? Yeah, they're force ghosts. The force we got to see force ghost Jasmine, force ghost Cinderella, force ghost Aurora. We definitely know that Aurora is dead because the teachers at the uh, at the Royal Academy for Sophia the First are her three idiot fairies. Oh no, not them. Yep, <laughs> them. Like them in the flesh, they fuck up a lot. The fourth fairy that like that got kicked out of the group became a villain it's a whole thing mm -hmm. but like let me i got but i gotta tell you i gotta tell you about elena of avalor elena of avalor is buck wild and goes super hard <laughs> like, nice. okay so it's a spin-off of sophia the first and we find out that the amulet and like the main voice in the amulet that has been like testing Sophia because the whole thing with the amulet is like if you do if you prove to have good moral character it gives you a blessing if you like do some fucked up shit it ge it curses you temporarily and it turns out the person who's been given out all these blessings and curses was Elena and Elena is the princess of a land called Avalor, a neighbor, a neighboring kingdom to Enchantia, the kingdom from Sophia the First. And we find out uh, Elena has been trapped with her abuela and her sister in this amulet for forty nine years. Yeah. And her no. and her parents were murdered right in front of her by the evil uh, court witch, and she was assisted by her cousin Esteban. Fuck Esteban. Uh, Jesus. He, what the fuck is happening he's, here? he's the fucking worst. And it, it, it gets more intense because like, so they get, so Sophia helps her out in the backdoor pilot and then it leads into like her whole adventures. And so she, so she is like 19, right? She's 19. However, 49 years have passed. So, like, the guy that she was, like, you know, about to marry is, like, in his mid-50s, had a whole ass other life. And then, mm. basically, a Steve Rogers happens where his grandson, who is now assigned to be her night protector like his grandfather was, ends up, like, striking up a thing. And it's like, you like it because they're technically the same age, but it's also a little weird, all things considered. Mm -hmm. And then you, and then you find out just all about all these like buck wild magic powers and shit. And like the, the whole lore between, about Disney dark witches and like where they draw their power from. It's wild, man. Uh, Jenna Ortega was the little sister, Isa, Isabella. And she was amazing. Mm. She was like this tomboy, adventurous type of princess. Not adorable at all. She was just a badass. Made very nice. dumb decisions. Um, the uh, the lead voice in that, that plays Elena, is uh, Amy Carrero. Oh. Which, uh, Tony, you'd recognize her. Opal slash Denise from Critical Role. Oh my god. Dude, dude. Elena Elena is Elena is a bad bitch, yo. <laughs> Elena's a bad bitch. All, what is <laughs> also also one of the coolest things. Because uh Avalora is heavily based on like a, a combination of various uh Mesoamerican uh like Latin cultures. Um mm -hmm. Uh, like they have magical animals and shit, right? Elena's buddy, her main magical animal that's like her like a Disney animal sidekick is this talking like jaguar eagle dude. And he's awesome. 
He's like if Sebastian was actually a badass. Oh. And not a pussy bitch. Although sometimes or he crab. can be a pussy bitch. Or but, but yeah, or a crab. But this Jaguar man was awesome. He ended up having a family. It was great. You got to see so much character development. Like I said, this show goes way too hard for a fucking Playhouse Disney show. What, what the what hell? No. What, what insanity. <laughs> like, like, dude, I watched this with my niece and I remember all of this. But like, it's been like 10 years. So I forgot it. And then when I watched the video, I was like, oh my god, that did happen. What the fuck? <laughs> this shit <show laughs> went so hard. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yo, for real, we gotta watch this show. I'm telling you. <laughs> like, I know it'll be, feel a little weird for a bunch of grown-ass men to watch this Disney princess kid show. But trust me, this shit goes hard. You will get invested. We're definitely adding it to the queue now that it's been reintroduced to my memory. Uh, because we're going to have a blast with that show. I can feel it. We're not going to we're not we're not going to cover it on the podcast because people are going to look at us weird as a bunch of grown men talking about a Disney princess playhouse Disney show but god damn it we're watching a we're we're going to be a bunch of grown men watching a Disney princess playhouse Disney show cuz it goes hard. In one of our older versions didn't we try to cover a TV show once where it was just you and me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, Jay. Yeah, I think yeah. we yeah. I, I I honestly think I pitched Elena of Avalor back then, and uh, yeah, oh man, I I have a lot of fond memories with that show because that was one of the first shows that I like actually I actively watched with my niece. It was that one and Andy Mac, which I call Baby's First Degrassi. <laughs> People still talk about. Yeah, and uh, Homeboy Angel, what's his face is Billy. Yep. Yeah, and uh, Home Girl just got done doing the. Doogie Hauser remake. Yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah. They remade Doogie Hauser. Yeah, yeah. She, yeah, she, she, she's a, she's a girl genius doctor. But, but she's not Doogie. Yeah, she's. Okay. Uh, she is just a girl genius doctor. So it's kind of like taking place in the same world yeah. as Doogie. Hauser. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. They, 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 they yeah. Even, I think they even bring in uh, NPH. Epic. Absolutely it, epic. It's called a like some long Hawaiian name. Yep. Because she, yeah, because Hauser. she's like a. She's like a cousin twice removed or something like that, like uh, married into the Hauser family, something like that, whatever. But uh, so it's just like weird, <laughs> irregular, just goofy family. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But yeah, seriously though, like dead ass, Elena of Avalor is on the queue. Nice. It's on Disney but... Plus. We're watching it. Uh, Did you see anything else? No, nah, that was it. Uh, like I already mentioned, I'm glad my mom died, so that was it. So Tony. Uh, what do you got? I'm sorry for leading us down this long rabbit hole, but I, I needed to talk about Elena of Avalor. We also went down the once upon a time rabbit hole, so yeah. can't really complain. Yeah, it's fair. Honestly, but, keep all then, this in, Brian. You don't need to edit any of that. No. That was no. that was perfect unhinged gold. I'm probably going to just like cut out like some of the ums and... Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's just... How but, as for me, I've been catching a lot of... Uh, anime that just came out recently myself mm -hmm. nice excellent, excellent recommendations from uh some new friends of ours that jay and i have made yep in the worst gen reading club discord shout out to katie and chelsea uh a couple of them introduced me to a few romance anime that i just absolutely love a sign of affection about a uh a deaf girl who's just living in the world and she meets this very tall guy who i'm not gonna actually... lie i only saw the title of this and at, as soon as you said the, uh, the description i was like oh my god that's a great title a mm -hmm. sign of effect oh that's good jay watch that show oh i plan on you it need to watch I planned Dude. on it. All every everybody everybody on shoujo twitter is like you got to watch a sign of affection. And I am telling you, I absolutely love our leading uh lady and leading guy. Nice. Love these two. Nice, love nice. them to death. Just from the first episode alone. And now are they on like are they on like the level of a uh, 
Tonikawa or uh, Horimiya? What, what, what are we talking about in the romance let, anime spectrum? Let me explain this to you in a way that hopefully you can understand. All right, all right. Our leading lady is a bundle of unsure nerves because she can't communicate like everyone else can. Okay, okay. So Liking the potential. Moment. So she had this moment in the episode where uh, a lot of foreigners came in. And she wonders, like, are they speaking Japanese? Are they speaking English? Are they speaking German? Mm -hmm. And our leading man is the kind of man that I want to be. Like, I aspire to be this man. Okay, okay. This man can speak three languages. Good for him. Japanese, English, and German. He's learning Spanish and knows some Chinese. I can speak two, understand three. He just says some boss shit. That if I were to say it, it would just come out wrong. Fair. Your tonality, very much like Brian, is pretty bad. And Jake, take my word for it. When you see our leading lady enter a state of pure bliss and happiness. Oh, the awe the aw, the aw factor is going to be off the charts. It, it's an awe factor. My awe factor. I died and went to heaven. So is this crunchy? High dive? What's up? Where, where, where are we talking? Crunchy. That will watch ASAP. That was already on my Another, list for seasonals. It's already on the queue, just FYI. Good, good, good. Another show I checked out is Mr. Villain's Day Off, which is a show about your typical Sentai general just wanting to do nothing on his day off. Is this in the same it's, universe as of uh, Love After World Domination? No. Oh. It's a different, uh, it takes the same Sentai tropes that uh, we commonly see. Mm -hmm. So, you would relate to the red of the Sentai team in this story, Jay. Okay. Fucker's bad with directions. Resonates. Resonates very mm -hmm. much. And uh, our protagonist of the story loves pandas. He uh, talks a big game about being a villain when he's actually on the clock, but when he's off the clock, he's just doing what he does. Oh, so it's like a rogue scenario. So he's like, uh, to give you a good example, you know when you're on the clock and you're just focused on that certain mode that you're in mm -hmm. when you're at work you enter your work mode yeah 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 that's him in principle he says even though he's on his day off when humans are eradicated he will occasionally let pandas or that one convenience store save them for last but in reality he's like oh i love these things understandable pandas are adorable my corgi mm -hmm. one of my corgis looks like a panda i love her i recommend this show because it's actually quite entertaining nice and uh, another show that I saw per a recommendation was uh, The Fool Angel Dances with the Devil. I think that's what the title is. I've heard that <laughs> title. What's that one? Basically, Akun, a demon, travels to the human world to save hell. That's his goal. Okay. To rally the forces of hell to fight against the angels. You know, your typical yeah. demons versus angels kind of thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He acts like a pretty average guy. Just a normal, just a normal demon guy trying to figure out human society, picking the right person to rally the forces of darkness, right? Okay. So he meets this girl named Lily. Okay. Appreciate the plan not, there. I am not going to say anything about Lily because I want you to experience this girl for yourself, Jay. You know, Tony, I can I, I can read your tone very well, and my soon senses are tingling. Oh, it's not even a soon sense. Oh. When you when I first saw this character in this character archetype, I was thinking one thing, but then a switch is just flipped. Oh, you love to see that. Ooh. You love and to then, see that. And then I was like, huh, I did not realize that would happen. I like it. <laughs> All right. I'll check that one out, too. It is so good. And then another show that uh, I think came out maybe a season or so ago. Mm -hmm. My Love Story with Yamada-kun at level 999. This oh, show is oh, adorable. Oh, I've seen that one. I've seen that one. It was good. It was very good. This, very comfy. It is a very comfy show. I like it. And I'm just at this point where I am in just romance anime overload at the moment. And I am just so amused and happy i feel that. that i still need to finish ray liana oh i still need to finish that too and then i am eagerly anticipating uh the epilogue for pokemon scarlet and violet 
That will be coming out on the 11th. Same, same. We will be experiencing that one together. Oh, we all, we will also be doing some rage shenaniganery, and this time we will not have a repeat of Santa Bird. Oh no, Damn. Santa Bird. Damn uh, you, robot Santa. For the folks at home, the raid dens of Scarlet and Violet are entertaining when you play with friends. When special events happen, when you have a very difficult raid, and you get knocked in the face with a fish every single time by this stupid toy bird every single time. And then when you finally get a third ally, the motherfucker shows up fucking drunk. <laughs> The complaining that you don't put out enough damage. I looked at that man from across the inner. I'm like, seriously? <laughs> we almost killed this thing by ourselves, bitch. You <laughs> held us back. For all intents and purposes, aside from the for the raid pains of uh, Pokemon, it's pretty much what I've seen. And I'm also being tempted to just purchase a sign of affection uh, manga because... Of course. Cool, cool. And I will let you know, gentlemen, mm -hmm. this is a, the only... I'm going to mention this because it is very rare for me to do this. All right. Ooh. I don't want to spoil myself with this show. <gasps> oh, it's that Damn. good. Shit. Yes. For the folks at home to understand, like Brian has mentioned earlier in the episode, I don't mind spoilers because I'll eventually see it. That's always been my philosophy on things. However, if it's something I'm invested in, I will dig for the information myself. But I am holding myself back so I can experience everything for a sign of affection organically. I'm I'm doing that for Oshinoko, and it's so difficult. The manga is so cheap. Is in the manga, it's so fucking good. So fucking good. But yeah. Uh, lastly. Before we move on to trailer talk, I uh, Tony's anime talk did remind me the new season of One Piece and the new arc Egghead Island just started and the first episode was phenomenal. I loved it. The opening, the new OP, amazing. The animation, the art style change, beautiful. Guys, I actually uh, saw that. We are on a roll. We are eating with one piece the one piece anime two arcs in a row what the hell it is nice. it is a time to be a one piece fan dog you just eat good eating very very nice. good almost like and, the delicious uh, and dungeon people oh. oh i haven't watched it yet mm -hmm. but uh the solo leveling has started Oh yeah, that's yeah, right. I, yeah, I I, I I haven't watched it yet because that is actually one I want to watch with you guys so we can all nice. experience the amazing yes. high octane action together. Uh, so I'm hol I was holding back on that one, but yeah, super excited. You and I, Jay, need to watch that shit. Oh yeah, no, we're no, I wanna watch all, no all, all three of us are gonna watch solo leveling. You and I are definitely gonna watch that sign of affection one together though. Probably tomorrow, like in between raid stuff. Yeah. Anyway. I'm going to. I want you to experience that first episode with me, because mm -hmm. I need an excuse to watch the first episode for another time. Speaking of a sign of affection, it comes out on Saturdays. Okay, just cool. Just to let you know. Okay, cool. We can we can set something up. But yeah, uh, with all that screen time out of the way, future Brian, you don't need to cut any of this aside from the pauses. But uh, mm -hmm. we are now moving on to trailer talk. Speaking of Brian, Trailer Talk is a special segment where Brian has curated a playlist of six, count them, six trailers for us to react to, and you can find it linked down in the description below, you two people. Audio people, you're kind of shit out of luck, but Brian will tell you what uh, trailers we'll be reacting to so you can look them up yourself. So, Brian, what trailers we'll be reacting to tonight? Well... We got an interesting bunch. We got two movies, four TV shows. All of them are kind of unusual. Starting off, we have... You know, it's not unusual to love that, anyone. ...that I'm really looking forward to. And uh, 
answers the tease that I said earlier. Mm -hmm. It's a movie called Lisa Frankenstein. Ooh, oh, okay. okay, okay, nice call. Okay, nice call, nice callback. All right, Brian, you're learning. You're potting now. You're potting. Look at that season, season three improvement. This is about a young woman who falls in love with her crush, but then he dies. So... Oh, so she does a little romance, neck romance. But it says that they have to to find their way through. Love, happiness, and finding the limbs. The, uh, like, uh, just that description gives me Warm Bodies vibes, and we already talked about how much we all loved Warm Bodies. Yep. Key things about this. It's, uh, written by Diablo Cody. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. It's directed by first-time director Zelda Williams. What? Oh. Yes. Oh, shit! Good for Zelda! I'm sure your dad the will be lead, proud. The lead is Catherine Newton. <gasps> oh, from Detective Pikachu, yeah. she's great. I love her. She, she, she and she's a Psyduck enjoyer, like yeah. our boy here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the creature, Cole Sprout. <gasps> nice. Oh, Sprout! He's good at playing offbeat weirdos. Mm-hmm. Nice. Certified epic. Thank you, Brian. I'm excited. But then, then a movie that's coming to Hulu very soon as a recording. All right. Uh, called Self Reliance. It's written, I believe, written, directed, and starring Jake Johnson. Okay. Peter B. Parker himself. All nice. Right. Nice. And basically, he plays a guy that's down on his luck, and then he gets approached by. A rich person, I think, played by Andy Samberg. I could be wrong. Okay. Telling him about this opportunity for him to do this, like, a uh, thing where all he has to do is survive 30 days to kill him. But if he can survive the 30 days, he gets a million dollars. Okay, that's not going to go well. So it's like an action comedy Death game. thing. Death game? Kind of, yeah, but out in the open, not like in a uh, domed situation. Yeah, yeah, it's more like it's more like crank. Yeah. Another one of the leads in the movie is um, Anna Kendrick. Oh, cool. Mm. Don't and tell I Jordan. Think it's got a, I think it's got a few other famous people in it, but we'll see with the trailer. Cool, cool. Then um, a new show that I think just randomly dropped on Hulu today as of recording. Mm -hmm. It's called... Safe home. I feel now, like I've I heard about this. For those, for those at home, a little bit of a trigger warning. It does have to do with uh, domestic violence. Yeah, is is, but, it, is is this the one that was like? I feel like it's based off of a manhwa or something, or like a webtoon. I don't know, but I do know that it's about a woman who leaves her cushy, cushy lawyer job to take up a job in like domestic family ah uh, she becomes like a she oh she becomes what? like a social worker or something or something like that okay but it also says things might not be as they appear oh mm. also there's another mini series coming out i think also to hulu called uh death and other details okay a quirky murder mystery on a cruise ship all right the woman who's at the center of everything and is currently the lead suspect in everything is uh, Jesse Quick. Oh, cool. Violet, uh, Violet Bean is her name? I think so. Yeah. And the lead detective who's also on the ship, Mandy Patinkin. <laughs> That's an interesting pairing. Nice. Then uh, for completely different... Netflix miniseries called uh, One Day. At a time? And, nope. Too soon. It's a YA, it's a YA romance. Okay, okay. About, about these two people, played by unknowns, who just meet each other in their, uh, I think, graduation or senior year, and they've only got one day together. Oh, I, feel, uh, I, I, love, these, love. I, I love these kinds of stories. 
Yeah. And uh, then the last one is on Peacock, a new show by Mike Judge. Ooh. ooh. Is, it, is it animated? Okay. It's uh, puppets. Cool. Puppets. I'm down with that. It's called In the Know. It oh. is about a fictional talk radio show about a, a guy interviewing celebrities, but he's not too good at it. That, that sounds hilarious. hilarious. I, I, I need that in my life. I Ryan. mean, Mike Judge is a funny motherfucker, so I'm he down. He is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean... Those are the All right. That, well, we will be back. Creative mind. Yep. It's coming from the creative mind of uh, Beavs and Byhead and King of the Hill. Let's not forget, Alan. let's not forget Idiocracy. You know, aka, AKA predicting the mm-hmm. future. Predicting the future. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> So, oh God. with that happy note, we'll see you guys in a sec via the magic of editing. But right now, we're going to react to these trailers. So, hear this word from our non-existent sponsors. Three, two, one. Uh, uh, uh. All right, we're back. You guys caught me on my uh, the count impression and Tony followed up. But we have returned. And we are here to discuss some trailers. Great batch. This, uh, you know, you're two for two this year, Brian. Two for two. This one was a lot of what the fuck, but still really good. Yeah, uh, especially that last one. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Mike Judge. Mike Judge is on some shit. We'll start with that one. That show looks unhinged as fuck. It's so, so... Messy and, so. and like the awkward conversation combined with the uncanny valley mixed media makes it more funny. Oh yeah, yeah, it certainly does. Part of me, yeah, you know. is praying to God our main character for this story is voiced by James Woods because it sounds like James Woods. It does. It does. And I, I need to know. You will soon be in the know because I am googling it. Okay. Good pun awesome work. Pun. Good pun work. Uh, but yeah, uh, other stuff. Man, that uh, that fucking uh, Frankenstein. Was it Lizzie Frankenstein? Lisa Frankenstein. Lisa Frankenstein. That yeah. looks like so much fun. Oh, it is it, full of it's, absurd. It's absurd, insane, and out of pocket. Because like... I didn't even think about this as a possibility, but I should have thought about it instantly. But she brought up, she was like, you know, I don't mind dying, but I don't want to die a virgin. And I'm like, wait a, wait a minute, Miss Frankenstein. Hold on. Hold on. Are you implying what I think you are implying, madam? You made the zombie choke. Like, spit up what he was doing, man. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Right? And, and then they're also doing, like, it kind of gives me totally killer vibes. Not only because it's set in the oh, 80s, yeah, yeah. not only because it's set in the 80s, but also these murders are just so campy. Oh, yeah. It's mm-hmm. shit. I love it. I am here. For oh, yeah. This- uh, you know. Heads up, um, peek behind the curtain, folks. This one has been added to the schedule. You'll be hearing that a lot with this batch. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. By the way, mm-hmm. I did Google it. In the know, that's not uh, James Wood. The main guy mm-hmm. uh-huh. is uh, Gabe from The Office. Oh, oh shit. My God. <laughs> that's great. Also, uh, the like younger dude bro that works there. Frat boy? Yep, yep. That's Luke from Percy Jackson TV show. What? Oh shit! What? <laughs> but he's a child. Yo, what the fuck? That's crazy. <laughs> you Charlie know, Bush now. You know, I've like it's so weird. You know, we always hear adults voicing children, and we don't bat an eye. But for some reason, a child voicing an adult um, is so wild. He's 19. Oh, IRL. okay. So he is college age. He he looks mad young. I thought he was like a freshman in high school. All ass freshman in high school. 
I've seen some pretty tall freshies. Anyways, moving on. We saw Safe Home. That's the only one that's not going on the schedule. Mm -hmm. Because it looks mm -hmm. great. And it looks to be very well acted. But good lord, does this look heavy as fuck. Mm -hmm. Like I said, um, even just to talk about it, I said trigger warning. Because mm -hmm. it definitely does deal with DV and uh, people accidentally causing DV. Because, like, y'all, uh, you know, j you guys don't get to see us, our actual reactions as they happen live, because we don't want to get bonked by YouTube. But it's a very common thing for us to, like, talk our thoughts while watching the trailer. This was the one trailer where we were all just dead silent. Because we mm -hmm. were all kind of uncomfy. Well, then we started talking about unrelated stuff. Like, Sweet Vicious, because the lead is in that. Yep. Wonderful show. Canceled too soon. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, but going back to stuff that is on the schedule, for sure, uh, fucking Self-Reliance looks like so much fun. It uh, might not be on the queue, but it will definitely be on all we watch along. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a screen time. It's going to be a screen time. You will hear a uh, united front mm -hmm. on that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Entertaining, to say the least. Yep. Uh, oh yeah. And then one day that looked to be. One day looks amazing. I eat this kind. Look, I am a whore for romance. Same. There is Same. a there is a reason I I put romance very high on my uh on my point list for uh plot beats for our upcoming D and D game. I'm a whore for romance. I love this shit. I eat it up mm -hmm. like it's candy. And this, this is a very unique and interesting romance premise. I've actually heard about this before. Yeah, this looks like something that the book talk girlies would gobble up too. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. So I just Googled it. It looks like it looks like what this is is it not what I initially thought it was. Okay. Because uh, Colleen Hoover has a book that's similar. I think it's Colleen Hoover. Yeah, no, Colleen Hoover is pretty popular. Uh, there's this couple where uh, they're not really a couple, but they meet once once a year. I think it's called like eight years. Mm -hmm. I thought that that's what this was. This no. one, this one is that what on this... steroids. It takes a, it's over twenty. Well, no, what it is apparently what it is is that this. Couple meets in ninety eight. I think they no. Said. They said the eighties. They said the eighties. So oh, probably like eighty eight. Well, um, but anyway, they meet on graduation, and we follow their lives, but we, the audience, are only seeing this one day a year. Man, that would be crazy. For the Twenty years. That would be crazy. That would be that would be like me. Seeing the girl that ki decided to kiss me on graduation once every year well, for twenty. Years. Well, it it's not it's not they d agree to see each other every day. They just run into it's, each other. We we tune into their lives during that day. Oh, it gotcha. Seems like, but I could be wrong. Gotcha, gotcha. It would be really weird though if that day was February fourth. Right. Oh man. Another thing that we're gonna cover. Yeah. But uh anyway, also uh death and other details. Mm. That looks mm -hmm. super interesting. Yeah, I am intrigued. First off, murder. Violet Bean looking mm. like mm -hmm. a whole snack. Delicious. Th that, whole course meal. That's crazy. Ooh. Who knew she'd be good as a blonde? Yeah, right. I mean, she she does she does need the she does need the speed force to run straight into my heart. <laughs> oh man, I'm still upset with what they did with her. Same, same. Uh, but yeah, do you uh, know what they did with her? Just real quick. I know, I I know I know the I know the plot beats, and I I, I know I know that she just got kind killed off screen. She got killed off off screen during crisis. They didn't bring it up again until the series finale, where the Wells character is going out to uh, find her and bring her back. Ah, gotcha. Harry? Might be. Because Harry was her dad, yeah? 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But anyways, uh, it looks really interesting. Uh, like she looks like a super detective who's teamed up with an even more super detective. Well, she looks like uh, she is just like a uh, vigilante thief. Yeah, a vigilante thief, like hobbyist detective. She she gives me she gives me very much like a like almost live action Nami vibes. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Also, because I know it's in the same vein as Nami. Felicia Hardy. Oh yeah. If Felicia Hardy didn't wear a sexy cat suit while she was doing it. Yep. That's why I said Felicia Hardy and not Black Cat. Mm-hmm. Anyway. And then Manny Patinkin. He, nice to see him again. I wasn't expecting him to be so good in this role. He gave me like oh, yeah. Pierce Brosnan vibes. Like if Pierce Brosnan played Sherlock Holmes. Well or like Inspector that, Clouseau. Well, for those that might not know. This is not his first time playing a savant uh, murder detective. Oh. Uh, he was in the early season or seasons of Criminal Minds. Oh, cool. As Gideon. Nice. This is different than his character on Criminal Minds because his character on Criminal Minds was very serious. Yeah, this one, this character looks like a total troll and I'm here for it. Yeah. Yep. But you knew that already, didn't you? Oh yeah, yeah. I but it's but more it's it, but it's more fun. It's it yeah, it's more fun to watch you solve it yourself. Yeah, I love and it that. It makes me wonder, and it makes me wonder. I want to know the story about our uh, our murder victim here. So What's I he about? so I already have a theory, not about the murder victim, but about uh, Mandy Patinkin's character and his motivations. Mm. So yeah. I think. He is aware of Homegirl's possible criminal past, and what he's doing mm. is training her and grooming her to get her off the path of being a criminal and onto the path of being a detective. That sounds good. And you know what he almost reminds me of? Mm-hmm. Like a, a retired or near retirement version of uh, Detective Clouseau. Yeah, that's yeah. why I made the Detective Fluso comparison. I also could see him, yeah. like, this is also how I imagine, like, a retired old man Dick Grayson. <laughs> I could see it. Because he's just so snarky and sassy. I love it. Yeah. Also uh, on the list, is there anything else that we're missing? I nope. Nope. I feel like that was everything. That's it. All right. So it's time for us to travel to the Pokemon Resort. Uh, there is no point in like doing a spoiler free section because there are four episodes. It's great. It's comfy. If you're a Pokemon fan, you're going to love it. That's the end of spoiler free. And it's a quick watch. Each Super- episode is like less than 20 minutes. Yeah. The first one was 20 minutes. Uh, the first one was and 20 minutes, and, and yeah, the first one was 20 minutes, and the like the others were like 15 apiece. So yeah, yeah, um, fantastic. So it was great. It was great. great. The art style Excellent. phenomenal. Like the and... the expressions on all the mon are wonderful. I love the different textures when it comes to like the fur and the use of like felt yeah. and stuff. Well, because that's the thing is uh is they did an interesting thing here where Pokemon come in all different shapes and sizes and all of that. So anytime they needed to show a Pokemon had hair, it was like crocheted. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I I thought that was awesome. I've never seen mixing that with claymation. Yeah, such such great done really well. Such great detail. The expressiveness of all the Pokemon were wonderful. Mm -hmm. Each of them, even Pokemon of the same species, had unique and memorable personalities. Oh my god. The Pikachu episode. The Pikachu episode was phenomenal. I'm not even a Pikachu guy for real. I'm not a Pikachu guy like that. I'm Eevee till I die. But... (laughs) Like, that Pikachu episode was so wholesome. The little picture with Pikachu sleeping with Psyduck. Oh, my God. It was adorable. Mm -hmm. Also, one thing I have to say, as a Psyduck enjoyer, 
I have never been so happy to see the main man just vibing. Oh, uh, my, 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 fa my favorite thing, just my favorite constant scene of Psyduck is Psyduck riding around in the scooter basket. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> fucking <laughs> cute. <laughs> oh my yep. goodness. Oh. This show made us appreciate the elemental monkeys. Which, you know, for those of you who don't know me and Tony, we really have developed a distaste for uh, the simmies mm -hmm. and the sages. <laughs> yeah, simmies, sage, whore, and seer. Seer, yeah. The only, the only one I like is the one Silent has because Silent is cool. But I like all yeah. of these guys because they're all just rambunctious little trolls. And they're fun. Yeah. And they're attached yeah, that, They're that, attached that, to uh, Tyler, who is just a cool bro. He, yeah, he's kind of like, he's kind of like the Pokemon verse of like that, like, Dude, bro, Golden Retriever. Yeah, he has Golden Retriever energy. He also gives me, like, vibes of Keanu Reeves, but, like, uh, like Bill and Ted Keanu Reeves. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Agreed. Also, masterful casting with this. Oh, yeah. Josh uh, Keaton as... Yeah, Josh Keaton surprising us as Tyler. Like, we were... We had our minds blown with that one. Uh, the hotel manager was wonderful phenomenal mm -hmm. loved her the uh, sister the sister from uh everybody hates chris i forgot her name yeah now. i forgot the character's she, name she, she yep she was great i love it really good good I, as like the cool the cool co-worker yeah the cool co-worker like, and uh like semi-mentor and i and she also gets extra points for me because she has one of my absolute favorite water starters the kip I love my, the kip me, 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 yeah, and I she love... has to teach mm -hmm. she has to teach the mud kip i don't know how to say this yeah don't don't over water any other way yeah don't over water and also don't blow all your load at once yep pause <laughs> pause there brian pause it's, uh, it's just a, it's just a baby it's just a baby, Brian. It's not even a marsh chomp yet. Calm down. <laughs> but anyway, and then uh, Rila, Re, what is her name? I'm probably going to get it wrong. Sorry. Rhea Fukushima? Yep. As Haru? She was great. The, the relatable, but super ball of stress It's Haru. It's so weird. Like, she has such fucking range. I still can't believe that's the same actress. As, as the female. Kimiko! Kimiko! What the f- No! What? Well, it does also make sense, though. Now I, I mean, want to you, see, you now I want to see fan art of Kimiko with a Psyduck. <laughs> Good for that. But I was just going to say, her, her performance here makes a little bit more sense. When you realize that uh, she was Kipo. Yeah. Because Kipo had her, like, stress moments. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, I don't know. It just, it sticks more in my head that she's keeping... But, yeah, yeah. she's so she's so relatable. Her help in the Psyduck, um, while also exploiting it for candy addiction, was relatable. And her love for Pikachu, relatable, but not because I love Pikachu, but I love Eevee on the same level as she loves Pikachu. And then and her, all, all of the Pokemon, they are just mm -hmm. equal yep. levels of adorableness. Yep. For it, adorable. I, yeah, some Dragon Oh my god, yeah. Tra Big. Dragonite was so fucking oh cute. He yep. is such a goober. I love him. I want to hug him. That and that is why he is in the intro for this. I want to hug him. Yep. Yeah. Big hugs all around. Which he he was in the episode where she was trying her hardest to help the poor little magic card. I love but... the I love the resolution to that. He evolves into the Gyarados. It's like, well, we got your floaty. I I guess you don't need it. Oh. Uh, it swims it's, up it's, the waterfall. It still throws me off. I know Gyarados is a flying type, but it still throws me off that those fuckers actually fly. 
and then it swims up yep a waterfall it's part yeah it's part of the legend uh but yeah Garrett, yeah, that, that episode was awesome. But seriously, the Pikachu episode was a standout. Them doing, mm. like, floaty sleds. Loved that. Mm-hmm. And just all the bonding with the Pikachu. And then the, the part that got me, the part that actually made me, like, audibly, oh, was at the end where, like, the Pikachu, who's been struggling to find its voice the whole episode, as they're waving goodbye from the port and the ship is pulling out, you just hear P P P Pika Pika Goodbye. I I usually don't really like you like that yellow Mickey. Only Ash's Pikachu is cool to me. But mm-hmm. you were oh, right. you were great. And not just not just any Pikachu or Ash's Pikachu. You cannot wait to see the captain. I am excited for the captain. He looks like a badass. And any Pikachu with as excellent taste in hats as that man has my respect instantly. Speaking about Pikachus, as they were saying, Tony was saying this, the episode where he had the multiple Pikachus, they all look different. Oh, yeah. and and something that super Pokemon nerds like me and Tony will appreciate, and I'm sure those of you out there that are super Pokemon nerds, they even display the Pikachu sexual dimorphism of the heart-shaped tail. Mm-hmm. You can actually mm-hmm. tell which Pikachus within that crowd are female. Yep. And mm-hmm. if you and if you listen closely, those Pikachu also have a higher tone of speech. Mm-hmm. So, like, yeah. crazy attention to detail. And as somebody, as, like, as two people who are lore horse for Pokemon, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like, this was, like, crack. Yes, and mm-hmm. to see a, a, a Graveler just being upset spaghetti yeah. <laughs> that oh. he had to leave. Honestly... A Pokemon Concierge is what really started me and Tony creating our personal Pokemon personality headcanon for all our Scarlet and Violet <laughs> Mon. Yep. Oh, nice. To be honest, we, I've always had yeah, lore. Yeah, we were, yeah, we were already doing that. We were already doing that, but Concierge definitely kicked it into overdrive. I mean, yeah. we, we had a big old conversation about... Our individual swamp birds. <laughs> yeah, which, by the way, that's another reason why, like, the Mudkip has a special place for me. Because recently, we had a massive adventure with our swamp birds, Power and Smiley, respectively. And Smiley nice. destroyed that fucking lamp. You go, yes, Smiley. It, it nice. Epic. We, yeah, so but, Smiley was Jay's swamp bird. Power was mine. Power yeah. came from, uh... Omega Ruby, actually. Yep. And so he was my star throughout my remake Hoenn Adventure. And then I caught, I caught, I caught Smiley. I found, I found her chilling in the coastal biome in, in Violet. But yeah, so, nice. so like, so much love and detail was put into this thing. I want like, more of this, and I want more like this. I, so a yeah. lot of Pokemon fans. Uh, with Horizons, in particular, the new series, have complained about the fact that, like, the new mainline series is no longer the, you know, gym challenge, battle, battle, battle series that Ash had. But personally, I think going in these different directions and, like, exploring Mm -hmm. different assets uh, and aspects of the world is gonna give the pokemon franchise much more longevity not that it needed more longevity but you know yeah like could you imagine because they do the pageants and things could you imagine something that was like a a, like idol anime don't 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 start with me brian don't you 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 activated neurons in this man's brain don't start activating in my brain don't start with me brian because i have always had this personal fantasy in my head 
where I was an idol in the Pokemon world with my with my with my star Mon Aphrodite the shiny Sylveon. Nice. But uh, anyway, back to the concierge though. Mm -hmm. Yep. Even like the smaller details, like the whole Gengar and Snorlax. Yep. The day night yeah. cycle. The the different changes in music to reflect the day night cycle. And, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the. The fact that we saw one Pokemon evolve? Yeah, oh, we did. Yeah, we got to see the hop we got to see the hop up evolve into a jump plus. And then we also yep. saw Gyarados evolve. Yep, yep. That was that was yeah. awesome. Uh, you know, if you want to keep showing uh, evolutions, Pokemon Concierge, season two, mm -hmm. you know what Pokemon evolves a lot? Mm-hmm. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Let's, let's do it. Let's I evolve. mean, Please. They showed, they showed one. Yeah, listen, if all all, of all all you gotta do to earn a ten out of ten from this man, Eevee episode. That's it. <laughs> That's it. None of them have to even evolve. They can just be Eevees playing around, flopping about. <laughs> I'm here. And all all you need to make this uh, disembodied voice happy is just more Psyduck. Yep. Yep. That's all, that's all I need. That's all I need. Good vibes and Psyduck. That's all I need. I'm just and also just if you if you want to hear me squee, turn one of the Eevees into a Sylveon. Absolute just, favorite Pokemon. Also, oh, another thing, another uh, thing that I would like to see personally, just another one of my favorite Pokemon in general. Let's get a Lolan Vulpix in here. A Lolan Vulpix. Yeah. Alolan and Vulpix, let's go. One of the most yep. beautiful regional variants ever. Yeah. And yeah. Just and, uh, spicy with it. Give me one of the convergent mon. Give me. I want to see. I, I, no, I want to see. Cold I want to see Wug Trio. Wug Trio would be <laughs> so <laughs> goofy <laughs> and dumb. <laughs> Wug Trio. I, I Toad's crew. I tell you what, I want to see. Mm -hmm. A little uh, crocheted uh, score bunny. I would love Aww. to see a Squirtle Bunny. Also, also, we're on a beach. Why haven't we seen a Squirtle in sunglasses? I, I am completely ah. disappointed. We, I would love to see a squirrel in a Hawaiian shirt and sunglasses. That would be epic. Or just as a yeah, or like a yeah. Blastoise with a lay, with two lays on its hydro cannons. What? Oh. <laughs> awesome. Oh man. Or, or you know, I could see. I can see them even doing that as like a like party cannon making it rain. Yeah, situation. they could turn it into a t-shirt cannon. Oh man! Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Well, oh. Let's make sure that uh that uh Mod Flanders doesn't get in the way of it. Yep. Also, oh. also, <laughs> also, also, one 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 last possible suggestion for for season two of Concierge. I would like an episode where a rivalry develops between our boy, the Goofy Goober Dragonite, and an up and coming short king who comes to the Pokemon Resort named Charizard. Oh, that would be hilarious. I would love that. Um, oh my god. I just thought of one of the cutest things that we could see. Okay. That I, that I want to see. Okay. And that is, with that, like, stitch thing, mm -hmm. Teddy Ursa. <gasps> oh! 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 That's too much cute! Too much cute! Oh I, my I goodness! Cuteness, I would die of cuteness, but I'm here to die of cuteness. Uh, but yeah, so to expand <laughs> a little bit on the Charizard Dragonite plot that just popped into my head, per I've always mm. loved the Dragonite Charizard rivalry that's like constantly in lore and reference in Dex entries, and I would uh -huh. I would love to see just this Charizard constantly trying to prove itself and everybody being like, "Oh, silly Charizard! You're not even a dragon." <laughs> You're a fire flying type. Stop being silly. Yeah. And also, yeah. the reason why Jay that Charizard's a short king, Charizard's like five six. He is our height. Yes, he's five six. But also, gents, I think we would be remiss if we didn't cover the pseudo cliffhanger. 
<laughs> Wait, what, what, what pseudo clip the, hanging? The, uh, the Waylord? Oh, yeah, oh, the, the Waylord. Yeah, I'm excited I, to see I the wanna, Waylord. I want to know. I want to know what that's about. Is is Waylord the Pokemon that's stopping by? Does he have more friends? I look, she, look, does he have more friends? I, I don't look, I don't care. I don't care what what the Waylord gender is or what its name actually will end up being forever in my heart and my head canon. This Waylord mm -hmm. will have the same name as that I name every Waylord that I catch. Moby. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it's shiny, it's just purple. It is purple. Or kind of, it's kind of lame, but you know, they can't all be winners. It I'm no, looking. At, really I'm looking at you, Solana. By uh... Jay, I, Brian, I realized something. Okay. Maybe we can get an episode with a shiny Pokemon. Oh, oh. Hopefully, one of the good shinies, and not not one of the puke green or pea yellow ones. Yeah, we don't need we don't yeah. booty shorts shinies. Thank you very much. Yeah. No, the, we don't. The cool, like thematically relevant color shinies. <gasps> Like a shiny Dragonite, for example, because shiny Dragonite literally looks like Peach Dragon. Yeah, it's actually quite adorable. I wonder if we'll get to see any like mythicals or. or uh, I would love to see some. I would love to see some mythicals. Like a Victini would be really fun. Uh, little baby Urshifu would be fun. I I think that would be adorable. Little Kung Fu. <gasps> Well, Togepi is one of my absolute favorites. I love Togekiss with all my heart. Oh, uh, I miss oh. you, Nimbus. You're, you know you're what? still in Pokemon you know Home. You know what we also need? What? I what? want to see a Pichu. Yes. I, if Pikachu's were this I cute. Need, I need to see the babies. I need to see the baby Pokemon yeah. so I can die of it, and just evaporate away. You know what's so funny? We used to constantly meme on Pokemon babies. Pokemon babies. They're good for you. They don't, Game Freak doesn't give a fuck about you. Pokemon babies. You are useless too. Oh man. But yeah, I want to see a Cleffa. I want to see, I want to see a Cleffa, especially after the heartbreak of that Pokemon Journeys episode. I need to see uh, a need to see a Cleffa. You mean where you get we get just robbed and had a bait and switch happen? Yep. Ugh. Yep. Cringe. Yep. Hate it. Beautiful episode. Very sad. Yes. Yes. So sad. But yeah, more Pokemon babies, please, please. Yeah. More of give, them. Give cute, cute. I also uh, need to see more baby starters. We got the Kip. We got the Kip. Let me see a Chimchar. Mm -hmm. Let me see a Squirtle. Let me let me see a Sobble. Give me my Bulbasaur. Give me more Bulbasaur. I want to see. Also, no, 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 Tony. No, Tony. You know what we need? We we, we, we need we need a need, Rock and Croc. Oh. We need the Coco! Yeah. We need him! We need the Coco! Can you imagine Tyler, yeah. like, you know, doing a luau and Fue Coco is out there, like, helping him start the fires and providing some jams? Yes! Yeah. That I would love. That That would be a good boy. We, look, like, we are all Team Coco yeah. here. We, we, we will hear no objections. Yeah. We enjoy... Yeah. We enjoy uh, Quaxley and Sprigatito, but, but, also, Team Coco. Yes. Also, we've now had a whole episode dedicated to Pikachu. Can we maybe get one or two of the Pika clones? Yeah. I would love to see this, uh, some love for the Pika clones. The Dene. Oh my god. The Dene oh. is adorable. Oh Dude. Dude. Could you imagine the chaos that we get into? If the monkeys teamed up with Mas and Minus. Oh, oh yeah, Ma oh yeah, uh, Plusle and Minin. Ma Masi Menos is Plusle the is Minin. the Titans characters. Yeah, yeah, I'm realizing <laughs> that now. 
Yeah, Masi Menos. Oh, yeah. yeah. But any but uh, fun fact, that's actually their names in Spanish though. Uh for those per, for nice. those Pokemon. But anyways, uh yeah, Masi uh, uh, yeah, Plusle and Mine would be Plusle and Mine would be great. Uh I I would love to see like oh, what, what what's a, what's another what's another super cutie. Oh fuck. Um I I want them to make me appreciate Pokemon that I don't like aesthetically normally. Like if they can do the impossible and endear me to Alola Mola, Aloma Mola, all right. Or Love Disc? Well, I, I'm i endeared to Love Disc because Love Disc gives me heart scales, so. Uh, dudes, I just thought of something, and I hate myself that I'm blanking on his name. Okay, describe them on. It, it's a beach. Why not have the Sandcastle? Sandy Guest! Oh, yeah, Sandy Gas and Pile of Sand. You throw a Delmise in there, have a spooky episode. Yeah, that'd be ep that that would be so much fun. Ghost party, <laughs> ghost party. Here for that. Ghost party. All and right. You, know, you could do that thing where it's like sometimes kids yeah. shows will do this, where it's like. A spooky episode, but it's like a fun spooky. Yeah, it's not like, like the go like the ghosts just want to play, but everybody's afraid of them, and they're mi being misunderstood. Love that. And then maybe maybe Haru is the one who finally discovers. Yeah. Oh, they're... maybe maybe. Okay, okay. One last pitch, and then we're ending the episode because we could do this for hours. Right. We could do this yeah. for hours. But so for the spooky episode, I have the idea right here. And Pokemon Company, you can have all these for free. As long as we get to see them, but so for the spooky episode, right? They got a group. They got a tour group of children, right, at the resort. And what do chi what do Japanese children do during the summer? Test of courage. And so, what if they do a test of courage at the beach at night, and they run into some ghost? They get scared, mm -hmm. but really all the ghosts want to do is just play and have fun. Mm-hmm. Play some you can have mm -hmm. Oh Phan it. Phantump is adorable. My one of my favorite ghosts, Mistrevis. Mistrevis. Um uh, also Jay. Mm hmm Litwick. Oh yeah, Litwick. You know, we we're we we're, 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 elder brother Lampit. Yep, we, we you know we we we've gotten over that rage. We do love that line in general. Chandelure mm -hmm. is awesome. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh man, I, I mean, oh, just to see the little cute candle. Oh yeah, yeah. Litwick is so adorable. Uh, yeah. yeah. No, I'm here for it. Like, I think this show could really give Objectmon the love they deserve because Objectmon mm -hmm. are way too overhated. In my opinion, mm -hmm. and I'm also happy to see that Metagross, my boy, ever. That's my boy, Metagross. Shout out to the boy. Yeah. Uh, shout out to the boy Gurin, legend, mm -hmm. absolute legend. Yeah, um, I, 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 honest to God, think that that man was trying to kill that graveler. Yep. Listen, listen, Gurren, you tried your best against Santa Bird. We almost got him. It's not your fault, buddy. It's Zack's fault. Blaming Zack. Always blame Zack. <laughs> and I it's check um, on Zack. Yep. Also, um, I know he's not uh not exactly quote unquote cute, but uh, I would like to see my boy Stark. Scyther. Scyther. Scyther's cute. Scyther can be cute. Scyther can I be cute. But but yeah, I just call him Stark because in our home in our home game yeah. of Pokemon, I had one and I named him Stark. Because you yep. know eventually he gets the red armor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But mm -hmm. that guy, like that mon. Like honestly, carried me a couple times. Listen, he was my go-to power. He, he he was a machine. The all the only the only other mon that could have you know topped like Stark in power. Like besides some of like my heavy hitters was Ku. Ku was a problem. Uh -huh. 
Uh, oh, who yeah. is our boy Trash is Heracross? You guys remember Trash from the uh, my my adventures with Superman episode? Love Trash. Mm -hmm. Yeah, gonna have him on yeah. soon. Hopefully, we can even have him on for the sequel episode to this because please make more Netflix. Mm -hmm. But I, I think uh, you can clearly tell this is a ten out of ten for me. We're gonna start off the year strong because <laughs> I loved this. For me, eleven out of ten. It's mm -hmm. only not an eleven because I didn't see more than one Eevee. Uh, and I hate to say it, but come on, Brian. Get it out, but so, I think for me though, just close. Nine point five. Acceptable. Okay. Acceptable. It's just because it's gone too soon, and I realize that, that type of animation probably takes a lot. Yep. It does. I'm aware of it. But it's just it was so quick and so done with that I don't think I could just give it the full ten. But Yeah, no, I feel you. Uh, I think for, I, I I don't want to speak for Tony, but like correct me if this is not how you feel. But personally, the reason I gave it a ten was even though it was so short, it sticks with it stuck with me, and it's still sticking. You know, mm -hmm. uh, like I, one I, of I, one of well, yeah one of the problems that we've had with other shows from last season slash last year uh, or particular movies uh, was that they were all right, but they were forgettable as hell. Monkey King, yeah. I'm looking at you. God, God, yeah. We were so guys... forgettable. We even forgot that we were you. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> we didn't talk about it in the year wrap up last week. Well, it wouldn't have made our top anything. That's I mean, fair. Even, even Heart of Stone, which was arguably a good movie. Didn't make the top. That's fair. Heart of Stone wasn't forgettable. I remember Heart of Stone. It had a lot of cool concepts. And I really want that sequel. Same. But anyways, that, so those were, our, those were our scores. We're wrapping up the episode. But we're not done just yet. Because Brian is going to tell you what we'll be covering next. And I think, personally, that it's pretty fetch. No, it's not. Oh, it's not? Oh, yeah. That's, no, it's uh, later. That's later. My bad. Miscalculated. That's week after. Yeah, miscalculated. Uh, next week, we're going from pocket monsters to building size monsters. We're covering Monarch. The big G, baby. G. And let me tell you, mm -hmm. we're we're pretty. We're we're a good chunk into this show, and it is amaze balls. Holy mm -hmm. crap. We got invested it, real quick. So much so that we were on a time crunch and then we were but we finished the first episode and there was a cliffhanger and we were like, uh uh, mm mm, mm mm. One more. Nah. Nah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's it's that good. That th th this uh, next week's episode is going to be a chonker. It's going to be kaiju sized. I apologize in advance, future editing Brian. And I apologize ahead of time to future editing Brian as well. All right. What with that, uh, this has right. been an episode of the Channel Chasers podcast. I think it's time for us to return. Thank you.